did we make lunch last night? Mmm, we did really well. Much better than a normal Friday. I think it was a tarot card. Mm. That will show you how good other people are. Oh, I don't think anyone took it seriously. I did. I'm getting married next year to someone connected with this pub. <laughs> well, it's just nice to see everyone enjoying themselves. Have you told Claire what that fortune teller said? She don't want to hear all that rubbish. Why not? It makes sense to me. I say it makes sense to me. You're off your head and all as well as that. What's her face? Trurry. And she didn't say out on toward. Oh, yeah. You're coming into money? No. Crossing water? No. Meeting someone whose name begins with J. Ashley had a very special message. Max nearly started to nip into the Rovers. I told him it was all right for me to fall in love again. Huh? She didn't ask about Joshua, she didn't tell me how to bring him up, and she didn't tell me what to say when he asked me about her. She'll have her own message for Dad, it. It was just a bit of fun in the pub. Prefer if Max and his name weren't mentioned, just leave it at that, there's no harm done. Where are you going? What's it to you? Nothing, as long as you're not sneaking off to speak to Steve, that's all. I'll tell him if I see him, but you're lucky, because right now I'm taking Simon out. Please, Peter, but mind your own business. What's going on? Nothing. We weren't trying to upset you with that fortune teller, you know. You wanted her to get me interested in Claire. Maxine's not been gone a year. I know that. I don't believe in afterlife, Dad. Ghost, spirits, psychics, any of it. it and Ashley. another thing, you've embarrassed Claire. Has she said out? No, she hasn't, but she won't, will she? But I know you set the whole thing up and I'm not happy about it. Terry said what she saw in the car. You planted it in her head more like. She's not got psychic powers. Everyone in Weatherfield knows what happened to Maxine. I'm only trying to help you carry on with your life. I am carrying on. I'm bringing up Joshua and running shop. Every day I wish Maxine was still here. Don't get upset. Dad, if I do fall in love again, I'll do it when I'm good and ready. Not to provide entertainment for everyone at Rolf, so just... Well, just leave it. What about our mad, passionate love? Oh, yeah. She'll have to stay where she is. But she's packing her bags right now, this minute. And she thinks the world of you, Les. Yeah, she does, doesn't she? I bet you're all right by yourself till I came on scene. Hiya. Kurt gave me a key. Did you, love? Well, I'm sorry, there's been a mistake. You'll have to go back home. What do you mean? It means you're too late. I sussed out your plan. What plan? You wanted to get in first, fill the house up. But I've already moved my stuff in, and I'm staying put. Have you brought everything with you? Yeah, I have. All of it? Every single thing? Yeah. What, even all the rubbish you normally cart around? Yeah. Even Chesney? Now you look here. Have you brought Chesney? Hey, yeah. Uh, who's Chesney? Les. Who is it? This has gone on long enough. I want to know who Chesney is. Les. Tell him. Is he your husband? No. Your boyfriend, then? He's a son. He's nine. And she treats him the way she always treated me. No, I don't. He doesn't have a mouth on him like you had. She doesn't know where he is half the time. Whose step have you left him on this time? No one's step. He's been well looked after. In care, like I was. No, not in care. These are her true colours, Les. She's a hard cow. I'm not. Chesney's with his friends. He's having a holiday. In November? Yeah. Why not? Oh, don't listen to her. She makes it up as she goes along. Do you? No, I don't. But I'll leave, Les. I know where I'm not wanted. Fizz has spoilt things for me before. She likes doing it. Too right. I'll pick this up up another time. When she's not here. So are. None of the things she says are true. But I can't talk to you while she's in the house. Get a dinner on that alone. You're buying a house? No, I'm getting married. Well, it costs £94. Hmm. If you married Karen. I meant at the register office. You must be getting married in the... Our cathedral. What, St Paul's or Westminster Abbey? You were married around the corner, weren't you? I I'm not married. No, I mean, sort of married, you and Amy. Oh, yes, yes, very much, yes. Is it worth it? What, marriage? Yes, 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 the wedding? No. I paid less than that for this shop. What, what time is it? Oh, uh, <clears throat> I don't 
Ten to two. How long have we been walking around? Twelve hours. We must have looked like a family on a day out. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sad thing is, Shelley could have been. Yeah, but you messed that up, didn't you? I know. Do you? Yeah. You just said anything that came out your mouth. Shell, do you ever think you're going to be able to forgive me? I mean, really, for what, what I did? I have. I've put it behind me. I've had no choice. <laughs> Even that fortune teller said that I'd only have one true love of my life. <laughs> yeah? And what, what, what do you think she meant me? I don't know. Well, you used to tell me you loved me, didn't you? Well, I suppose I did. Yeah. I still love you. It's words, Peter. You're good at them, aren't you? Yeah. They come from the heart. Oh. I wish I could believe that. You can't, you? I wish I could put things right. Do, do you want to come in for a drink? Quiet in the afternoon and maybe we can have a chat. Yeah, um... Well, Lucy's going to have to pick Simon up. I, I, I can come round later. All right, then. I might see you later, then. Yeah. The look on your face, Ashley. You two look as though you enjoyed yourselves. We did. We had a great day, didn't we? And we saw some squirrels. Suppose you showed them off to all the neighbours. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, Jack Duckworth had a look at him. Then I had to show you to me mate Kieran, didn't I? Naturally. Yeah, look at him. Little boy to be proud of. Well, I'm glad you think so. Oh, yeah, I do. And I'll tell you what, we're looking forward to having some more days out, aren't we? Well, you can have them more or less any time you like. Oh, thanks, Lucy. That's, that's really kind of you. Hi. Hello. I'll, uh, I'll give you a ring and I'll see you soon. OK, yeah. Thanks. Ooh, happy families, eh? I trust you to walk in at the wrong time. Your life's a mess, Peter, whether I walk in a room or not. Really? It's not as much of a mess as yours is going to be. What do you mean? You'll find out. You haven't told him. You haven't had time. Really? Are you sure about that? <laughs> Karen, the swans were a joke. But a horse-drawn carriage, dozens of bridesmaids, a country house hotel, designer clothes, a wedding planner. I mean, 50 grand wouldn't cover it, never mind the honeymoon. Be worth it. Karen, it'll be a waste of money. We'd be stupid to fork out for it. I'm calling it off. No, you're not. Karen, look, if we get married again, it'll be in a register office. I am not. Marrying you in some sad, poky little hole at the back of the town hall. Well, it was fine last time. It isn't fine now. It's fine. People are going to think we're poor. Oh, Karen, they'd be right. I'm not doing it, Steve. Well, I'm not doing the five-star luxury extravaganza gold leaf the lot. I don't want gold leaf, and I don't want dozens of bridesmaids. Well, good. You'll be happy then, won't you? Because you're not getting them. I am not marrying you in some registry office. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. I've made up my mind I'm not going to marry you, I quit. What? I've had enough, Karen, I've had enough of the whole thing, so... I've ended it. Without telling me? Well, I'm telling you now. Do it behind me back? No, you know. We were happy this morning. We thought we were. Do you know what all you ever do is let me down? Well, you've done it big time this time. Karen, you're the one that's done it. Not like this, I have not. Well, I'm not going to stand it shouting the odds. The wedding is off. Really? Well, that is exactly how I feel. Now, I'm going home. Good, because I don't care anymore. Oh. Uh, I'm... I need some fresh air. Did you say that the wedding was off? Yeah. We were on this morning. Oh, I wonder what's gone wrong. All right, see, there's not a little lad that baby in your pieces. But you and Ken are dead proud, aren't you? Yeah, well, we're proud of Simon. We're not proud of his circumstances. Circumstances? I've got three grandsons, and I don't think any of them have ever seen his mother and father in the same room. Ah, I suppose that's the way it is nowadays. No. I'll be fair to Peter, he's doing the best he can. Oh, yeah, he does want to be a good dad. In the meantime, there he is trying to get well in with my Shelley again. 
Another looking house. Hmm? Yeah, well, you can't really blame her for being suspicious, can you? I don't think you've got any more surprises to come out of the hat, have you? No. Learned me a lesson. Good. Even still, I need to know if you want to see me. I, I think so, but I want to take it slowly. I mean, it's going to take a long time before I trust you again. But you think you will? I mean, it eventually. Let's just wait and see, eh? Just tell me what happened. I was right. First Peter dumped me for Shelley, now Shelley's dumping me for him. She's not back with him. She is. She was all over him. She's all over Simon too. Oh, she must be mad. Let her have him. No. He's my husband. I've got the ring. I've got the marriage lines. Why should she take away something that belongs to me? But you don't want him. I don't see why she should have him. Oh, let them do what they want to each other. What do you care? I care enough to make sure they're never happy. I'm going to see to it that they don't last five minutes. How? What will you do? Oh, you'll find out. She thinks he loves her, but he doesn't. She needs to be taught a lesson. What are you doing? Your mum could have answered. Well, I need to rest a rolling pin for you. Uh, more like a sledgehammer. Well, whatever. I'm a bookie. I'll take my chances. Yeah, I think we know that, Peter. Anyway, what is it? Couldn't it wait? Well, it can't, no. But I can. What? I've had an offer on the bookies. But it's not a bad one, really. Huh? I'm not taking it, though. Why not? So I'm not going anywhere without you. As long as it takes, I'm not going anywhere. I've said nothing to give you the idea that I'm a safe bet, Peter. No, I know. I'm not saying that. I know you need time and you need space, right? And I'm backing off. But all I'm saying, Shell, is come that day, I will be here waiting for you. And what if that day never comes? All I'm saying is that I'm not going anywhere, OK? Shelly, who's down there? Look, you better go. Look, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I do, Peter. Believe me. Shelly? I, I don't want any trouble. Just as long as you understand. Shelly, who is it? No, thank you. Well, I'll pick them up at the box office at seven. Yeah. Bye. Yes! My lucky day, Puccini, Tosca, two returns, smacking him in a dress circle. I got an Italian diva and half a Russia playing the orchestra. It just couldn't get better. Sounds a right laugh. It's a tragedy. Actually, it sounds pretty sad to me. So, are you referring to the opera or me? I don't know the opera and I don't want to. Ah, but you know me by implication, right? So, am I sad? Look at me. See which way my mouth is curling up at the edges. Is that sad? Is this sad? No, I don't think so. So don't worry about me, because if there's anything sad around here, it definitely isn't me. £2.20, please. What? Why would anyone just let up on me? Oh, well, it's taken you long enough to get round to asking that question. I can't wait to hear what your answer is. What is it this time? Have they sacked you already? That must be a record, even for you, Tracy. No, they haven't sacked me. They're just... They're treating me like dirt. They got me working the worst shifts, stuck out there all night. And they keep going on and on about the baby. They just won't let up. I mean, can't anyone see that I'm just trying to do what's best for the kid? I was under the impression you were giving it away. Yeah, well, that's for the best. Oh, really? Look, ma'am, I know that you offered to help. It wouldn't have been fair on you. Too long in the tooth, are we? No. I just mean that you're too kind. I wouldn't ask it of you. Oh, Mum, all I'm trying to do is to get some good to come out of this mess that I've made. It's just so hard. They shouldn't have put you on nights. Not your first time out, not in your condition. It's cruel. Oh, call me. Uh, oh. Now, I don't want to be unkind, but um, your art pot has been cooling for a few years, you know. What folk need these days is a more fully textured, spicy mouthful. 
Really? Take no notice of him, Betty. All through history, there's been somebody out to destroy great British mm. traditions, of which your hot pot is one of the finest. Thank you. I, I mean, look at them. Adolf Hitler, Napoleon, Elvis mm. Presley, and they all failed in the end. No, Betty, hot pots will triumph. In fact, I'll order one this very minute. Mm. I've had a very demanding morning. Mm. So, uh, do we get free samples of this vampire thing? Then? No, you don't. Them pies will sell themselves. You want to watch it if you don't buy them, they jump up and bite you in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> I might use that in my advertising campaign. Very droll, Norris. Listen, love, if you really don't want my hot pots anymore, oh, it's fine by me. I mean, I'm fed up with crying over those onions. Well, what's this about, Pop? Well, it's Freddy. He wants to wipe out my hot pots. What? And replace them with vampires. Oh, there'll always be a place for your hot pots, Betty. Oh. Take no notice of him. I say, take no notice. He'll have another daft idea come Friday. You better add one more word on this subject, and I shall take my taters home with me. <laughs> Our usual, please, Beth. Can't wait for the wedding. Mm -hmm. And I've uh, been thinking about what you said, and you're right. Well, I've got it totally out of hand. So I've thought about it, sorted it all out of my head. And I've scaled things down properly. Well, thank heavens for small mercies. So, we're just having the once one, Steve. Sorry? Because don't want people to think we're showing off, do we? You never said. You never asked. Asked what? What I was going to do with the rest of my life. What did you imagine, Peter, that I was just going to hang around here like nothing had happened? I've tried that. The result is I get laughed at every time I push Simon down the street. No, you don't. Well, that's the way that I feel, Peter, don't you see? Look at her. She was daft enough to marry Bluebeard whilst he'd already lined up marriage number two. Every time I look at a wedding bouquet, I think of ours. I always wonder why he didn't ask me to do yours and Shelley's flowers. Could have given you a discount, you know, kept it in the family. Or was it because I was about due? It's very sensitive, that, Peter, but you know what? I think I could have managed a floral tribute for you two. Look, can we not go over all that again? Exactly, Peter. Totally with you there. Don't want to go over it endlessly. I don't want to be reminded of it every time I set foot outside the front door. That is exactly my point, and that is why we've got to leave. I understand that. But, you know, it's just a shock. I wasn't expecting it, was I? Yeah, well, I didn't see any point in dragging it out. You've only tried to stop me. So where are you moving to? Andalusia. What? Spain. Yeah, some old friends have opened a small hotel in the mountains and they want me to help them run it. Board and lodgings, but it'll do. And then, maybe later, I might open a place of my own. And what about him? I mean, what about Simon? What's he gonna do? Who knows, he might grow up to be the first Mancunian bullfighter. No, I mean me and him. Him and his dad. Lucy, this is not fair. You can't just move to Spain. Yeah, I knew you'd try and stop no, us. No, I understand that you have to. I do, but Spain? I knew you'd be upset, Peter. Whatever other faults you've got, and they're plenty, you've always shown yourself to be a good father. And I know how much he means to you. And I know how tiny as he is, how he lights up every time he sees your face. There's not many around here that do. Yeah, I know that, and I'm, I'm really sorry, Peter. You can't expect us just to stick around so that you've got easy access to afternoons a week. No. Well, it's only Spain, isn't it? It's not the end of the world. I mean, you can get cheap flights all year round, can't you, these days? And people trip it for weekends. Then there's the holidays. Don't have to be in the bookies all the time. I can make it work. Hey, don't you fret yourself, son. Your dad's still gonna see you. He'll see you as regular as clockwork. I promise. Don't make promises you can't keep, Peter. I'm not. I think that you are. I'm not with you. Exactly, you're not. How are you going to see your son when you don't know where he is? What? Peter, I want Simon to have a family. Father, mother, little dog, a rabbit, maybe a hamster. What he doesn't need is a dad who tugs at his heartstrings at bank holidays and fights over who has him for Christmas Eve. You know, he could do without that. We both need a clean slate. But that's not fair. When I mean, you're not giving me a choice in any of this. Oh, but I am. No, you're not. That's exactly what I am doing. The choice is simple. You either lose us completely or you join the family. I'm not with you. Please, Peter. 
Well, try and understand. It's really simple, okay? Tomorrow, Simon and I catch a plane. We either do that without you forever, in which case you say bye-bye to your son now, or the whole Barlow family travel together. We head off for a new life. Husband, wife and child. One big happy family. What do you say, Peter? The choice is yours. Up sticks for good. You know, it's not like you've been missed, is it? <laughs> Thanks. You and me and Simon, yeah? Yeah. It's just a bit sudden, isn't it? It's always been a pipe dream, now I'm gonna go for it. We'd give it another try, would we? Yep. You and me? I'd have a go at being mum and dad. Can't promise anything more, but who knows? All that sun could addle my brain. I don't know, I can trust you. Oh, unbelievable. What, you think I'd toy with my son's happiness just to score points? No, of course I don't, Lucy, I'm sorry. Wind up to your department. And how long would the sniping go on for? Six months? Two years? How long? I don't know, Peter. I'd have to work on it. And Lucy, eh? Your mum is full of surprises, isn't she? Simon and I are offering you life. It's a golden opportunity. We've got mates out there. We've got a support network. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can see that. And when opportunities come, you've got to grab them with both hands. They focus the mind. Yeah, well, they certainly do that. Not very good at choosing, are you? What would I do for a living? Any number of things. I don't speak any Spanish. Una cerveza, por favor. Beer, please. Uh, tengo que conforzarte algo. I have a confession to make. All right. Oh, and here's a lifesaver. Usted me casara? Mm. Will you marry me? Oh, you're really tempting me now. Don't have all the answers, Peter, but I know it's not where you are, it's who you're with. Yeah. Do you mind looking after him for an hour? I nip out to the estate agents. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Come, don't come. But don't ever accuse me of taking your son away from you. I'm offering you the chance to be a full-time dad here. Tea's nearly ready. Time that well. Well, I heard you in the shower. Did you uh, manage to get any sleep? Yeah, yeah, I feel rested. Just as well. Thanks. Now, you will be careful, won't you? I think Steve's pulling a fast one, putting you on nights. Yeah, well, I'm their unique selling point. Yeah, well, I can see all the advantages for them, but none for you. We're just worried about you, that's all. I'll be fine. Look, I'll be in radio contact. I'll have my mobile. Anyway, Mondays are dead quiet. I'll probably just be ferrying a load of spinsters to and from Pilates. And drunks. And idiots fancying their chances. Look, I cope without you and Mum in London. I'll be fine. <sighs> Went the monster behind Bernard's mother. Not now, Bernard, said Bernard's mother. I think he likes it. Yeah, he likes all the voices. Yeah. How's everything downstairs? Yeah, the estate agent reckons it'll sell as it is. Right, oh, good. Need more time. That's a surprise. Oh, come on, Lucy, you can't just expect me to hop on a plane tomorrow and leave everything. No, you're holding everything in your arms. I need a few days. No, I need to know now. Why? What's the big deal? Commitment. I need to know you're committed to Simon. You make everything so black and white. I don't see what the dilemma is. I don't know why you're even agonising. You've got a future with your son or a life in so-called happening Weatherfield. Well, it's not as simple as that, is it? Look, all I'm asking for is a bit more time, just so I can get my head round it. Maybe Weatherfield has hidden attractions, in which case you may as well stay put. There's no point in schlepping all the way over to Spain and hankering after your local. Me and Simon are off to start a new life. It's now or never. I get the message. If it's not now, then <laughs> he'll probably turn up on your doorstep when he's 15 or something, demanding money, guilt tripping you like crazy. So I did to my dad. So, break the cycle. I need to know tonight. A man of eclectic taste. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you blew me out for a meeting. I did, and then the client blew me out. Oh, that's karma, baby. Uh, that's par for the course. And I've got a 7 a.m. breakfast with a woman who wants a prenuptial agreement. Mm, that's uh, unromantic. Mm, you're not kidding. Um, so the cynical bride's brunette, our love life is with her own? Certainly not. 
I'm buying you lunch tomorrow if you can bear to lay down your pricing gun for one hour precisely. I am. <clears throat> oh, who's holding the fort if you two are in here? Uh, Todd. Oh, he's a lovely lad. Quietly intelligent, doesn't plant it. Yeah, offered a place in Oxford. Hmm. But the lure of the corner shop was just too much for him, was it? So where are you taking me? It's a surprise. I'll call you in the morning. Yeah. Well, don't you look particularly beautiful tonight? I thought I'd make a special effort for my boyfriend. Is that right? In case we snatched five minutes together, I went completely mad and had a old ten. That time of the month again? Joke. You should be happy you have the work ethic. We never spend any time together. We live together. Can't you swap shifts? We could go out, get drunk. Stay in, get drunk. Please. I'll have a word with the boss. Do you realise you see more of my boyfriend than I do? Every job has its drawbacks, love. Yes, Deirdre, I'll tell her you called. Again. What? OK, just hang on a minute. Tracy, have you got your sarnies? I don't like the look of that. That's my fellow you slated. Who is he spending his break time with while you're stood there like a lemon? Oh, albeit a lovely lemon. Take She's right, though. Oh, they're probably having a big powwow about me, aren't they? Peter's probably nabbed him. Needs a sounding board. And the Lucy. Yeah. yeah. She's going to outrun a hotel with some mates. And meanwhile, Shelley has shown signs of uh, the frosting. Yeah, definitely. Well, I put all my cards on the table and I told her it's her I want. I know Lucy's reshuffled the pack. Yeah. You live an exciting life, Barlow. Yeah, it's not my choice. I'd like a quiet, uneventful one. Me and Shell get back together. We see Simon at weekends and we try and rebuild some sort of normality. And she's definitely coming around like full reconciliation, the lot. Yeah, well, it's going to take a while, but I mean, it's looking that way, yeah. Look at that face. Well, you did put ten years on her not so long ago. I know that. And I don't need anybody to tell me. I crucified her. And there's no middle ground with Lucy at all. No chance. You see, caught between a rock and a hard place. So much for long-lasting lipstick. <laughs> um, do you fancy a nightcap after we've closed up? I fancy collapsing into me pit, love. I've not got the same energy levels as you. I'm an old woman. Oh, <laughs> get lost. Um, well, just a quick one. It's just I've got something to talk to you about. Fine, in the morning. And I'll be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Right, better make a start on those glasses. I'm thinking of getting back with Peter. Come in. In spite of everything, I still love him. How can you think so little of yourself? I'm not asking for your approval. With your permission, I just think you deserve the truth, OK? You'll never get any truth out of him. He's changed, ma'am. And Lucy will lend you Simon at weekends and you can play happy families. I haven't thought that far yet. Oh, liar. Maybe it is pathetic to love someone so much, but I can't stand the thought of life without him. I open my eyes every morning and I think, what's the point? That's not love, that's depression, and no wonder. I have to give it another go, man. I really think me and Peter can have a life together. <sighs> Nightly battle of wills. Yeah. He's growing up fast, isn't he? You reek of smoke. Have you been to the Rovers by any chance? Yeah. I needed a drink or three. Dutch courage? Spanish, actually. So you're coming with us? Well, if it has to be now or never, it has to be now, eh? Wow. You thought I'd bail out, didn't you? Do you know what made me mind up? There was a thought of Simon turning up on my doorstep at 15. Total stranger. Dad, why did you stay in Weatherfield? Oh, well, son, I had this, uh, grotty little bookies. So, you 
You're really committed to making a go of things. Yep. You, me, and Simon. I really didn't doubt you, Peter. I know you better than you think. Kira. How are you? Where's she? She on the back. Give it a shout, boy. No problem. Shell! Why don't we just go through to the back? Because I want to make this as short and sweet as possible, then we can get out of here and we can get on our way. Okay. Peter, uh, have we come at the wrong time? Just. Uh... What's going on? Shell, I am. Listen. What's she doing eh? Why don't you just listen to what Peter's got to say and you'll find out. Go on. Uh, yeah. Some things have happened, Shell, okay? And, uh, me and Lucy decided to give it another go. It's, it's more for Simon than anything. So you don't have to... to stay here and witness it. We've decided to move away. Spain. New country, new life. You, uh, you can forget us. Forget? Yeah. You can start a new life then as well. So. Ah! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ah! Call that you're going away, present. Okay, all right. Okay. okay. Probably deserve that fine. Yeah, but no more, eh? Get out! Get out of the barrier! It's okay. Come on, let's go. What? Look, I've said everything that I came here to say. I did it, didn't I? Now, can we just leave, please? Oh, no, Peter, no. I'm sorry. There's been a change of plan. Well, not really a change on my part, but it's something that I've always had planned, which is that I'm going, but you're not. Of course I am. How? Have you got a ticket? No, you've... You haven't? I haven't. Not for you. No. So why did you why make me Why do you think? Go? Revenge. Pure and simple. Revenge. So now me and Simon, me and your son, we're off to start a new life. So you can stick around here and make the most of what's left of your old one. You can't. <laughs> Goodbye, Peter. <laughs> Bye, everyone. I don't believe this. She planned all this, didn't she? No, oh, never mind, Lucy. Let's get you home. I'm gonna kill her. She set me up. Don't you ever learn a single lesson. Do you keep out of this. No, just calm down, Peter. Calm For down. Sake. Look, you're not going anywhere like this. She's not going to get away with this. Now, love, get that down, you. Can I have some ice? For brandy? No, no, for me hand. I gave him a right whack. Oh, I was so proud of you when you walloped him. She knew how hard it was for me to do that to Shelley. I mean, why didn't she just go? Why didn't she just sneak off into the night? Why did she have to ruin our lives on top of it all, eh? Just for once, can't you think about somebody other than yourself? I'm thinking about Shelley, Deirdre, not just me. Oh, yes. And how easy it would have been for you to get back with her if Lucy hadn't shown you up for what you really are. She'd have still took my son, wouldn't she? Would that not have been Look, enough? Peter, she didn't just want to win. She wanted you to lose. There's a difference. Yeah, well... She's not won yet, has she? I mean, she can't just take my son to Spain on a plane just like that. Can I take out an injunction? Stop her. I can, can't I? I mean, I'm his dad. I mean, I do have rights, don't I? Where's the phone book? Dad, where's the phone book? Most people, you can calm them down with a nice piece of it and a couple of chops, not Battersby. No answer. What sort of hours do these people keep? Uh, what do you want doing with these? Well, can't you just leave them where they are for now? Well, if somebody trips over them... Look, please don't worry about the bags, Deirdre. They'll be out of your way soon enough. Look, if I can't raise a solicitor, how am I supposed to take out an injunction? Don't you need a judge for that and a court? 
That's what a solicitor's for. And money. Got plenty, have you? You love this, don't you? I'm just trying to be realistic. So that's it, is it? I just have to accept I'm never going to see my son again. You know, we really ought to get a chiller cabinet for the champagne. Mm, because waiting for it to get to the right temperature really can ruin the mood, wouldn't you say? Why don't you just keep some in the fridge, Ed Herm? You take more bottles than we sell to the rest of our customers anyway. And a decent cognac. Always the best way to round off a meal, don't you think? Depends how drunk she has to be before she falls for your legendary charm. Mm. And you will be locking up tonight, I hope, because I've no intention of uh, breaking up for my evening. I lock up most nights. Oh, it's just his oh-so-subtle way of letting us know he's no intention of staying in his own bed. Maya, after standing you up, well, that's what I call an apology. Oh, she must think you missed her right. Does she know your first names always? You know, one of the best things about Maya, apart from her being very beautiful, is I can have an intelligent, grown-up conversation with her, not spend the evening sniping. Do you know the difference between me and Lucy, Dad? I loved her. And I love Shelley. And I know that sounds stupid, but her, she... She's done all this out of some sort of spite and nastiness. Yeah, well, I'm sure she'd say you drove her to it. Yeah. But I really deserve to lose my own son forever. Tell me, do I? I'm not the person you should be asking. Well, she's not here, is she? No. But you know where she is. But do you think there's still time if I hurry? Yeah, but you'll only get in the way if you talk to her calmly. Oh, I'm going to talk to her calmly when I've got my hands around a flaming neck. I'm coming with you. How do you cook this? Hey, spaghetti. Try to have a special long pan or something. I don't know. Janice used to do it. I wouldn't know what I'll sing. What do you want me to do? I've got bellyache, heartache, can't go out the house, nowhere to go even if I could. And all you can think about is food. Well, that's cos I'm hungry. I'm thinking about fizz and all. Oh, wish we'd mention her. Now that Scylla's gone from my life. Hey, she, she's come back, can't live without me. I knew it, Kirky, baby. Come on, answer the flipping thing. Oh. Well, it's not Scylla. Oh. I'll say surprise, surprise, if you want. In fact, I do come bearing gifts. You haven't got any food in all, I suppose. I've not the flaming Red Cross. Much better than now. I hear that you're not too well, Leslie. You were right. And it's down to you. And when I'm fit, I'm going down the council to complain. Is there any need? Now, can't we settle this amicably? It's not you that's in pain. But I'm willing to listen to others. Now, see. Now, uh, these are just a gesture. There's no guilt here. In that case, I've got a gesture for you and all. Hey, don't forget about me. I'm feeling dog rough and all. You've, uh, you're going to be taking the piece of pie with you, I suppose. Hey? To public health. Hard evidence is what they need. You've got a sample in the fridge, I take it. Might have. No, and if he had, I'd have ate it. You gobby get. So it's your word against mine. And Kirk's. And when I'm able, me and him will be outside that shop of yours. Telling all your customers how you made us ill. Then try to bribe us with a few cans of ale. I reckon there's quite a few of us, don't you? That's slander. <laughs> so sue me. I don't think you'll get much. Do you? Well, if that's your final word. It's not. My final word is off. Fine. Just remember, it's only Spain. Two hours on a plane. It takes longer to drive to Scotland. Yeah, it may as well be the other side of the world if I don't know whereabouts it is. So, you get an address, you get a phone number, anything, and then when the dust has settled, you're ready to see him. But you've got to convince her you're not going to cause any trouble. OK, all right. right. Uh, it's not a taxi, is it, sir? Uh, no, it's not. And it's not a bus. Oh, look, please, mate, I don't need this. You'll have to move it. Oh, listen, Jobs, if you had any idea uh, Peter, what Peter, kind of... Peter, give me the keys, I'll move the car, you go and find her. Hello, how are you, Joshua? Hey, hey. Me and our Josh are taking Claire home. Then we're stopping off for some tea, don't we? Yeah, where are you taking him? Uh, Delphine's. That new burger place. They're advertising in the Gazette. It looks nice. A burger? 
Ashley should know better than that. It won't do him any harm, and he'll probably only eat a few chips. See, you're planting in his young mind that burgers are a treat. It was Paul Newman, weren't it? He said, what's the point in going out for a burger when you've got Philip's steak at home? Mind you, we were talking about his wife. Sentiment spot on, though. Best meat it well, the little fridge, and you have to take him out for one of them things. Good job, we're not going for a pizza. <laughs> what's your language, lady? I say, what's your language? You look stunning. Thank you, kind sir. I did tell myself as I applied a very indulgent body lotion that you'd uh, probably prefer that to me marinating meat. <laughs> How well you know me. You know, the next time while you um, pamper yourself, I shall cook and I promise you nothing will come out of the packet. So there's going to be a next time? Oh yeah, you should never know that. I never take no for an answer. You're very sure of yourself. Well, somehow I don't see you going for the indecisive type. You also make a lot of assumptions, Mr. Allahan. Well, I have to miss my you don't give much away. <laughs> oh, you're the grocer. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> a solicitor doesn't give anything away. You know, I'd hate to play poker with you. Even strip poker. <laughs> Especially strip poker. Yeah. You know, I'd be down to my pants while you still got your hat and coat on. <laughs> I like the sound of that. We must play sometime. Coffee. You want a cognac with that? Mm. You trying to get me drunk? Anything else? <sighs> Good. Because I have a feeling I need to keep my wits about me with you. Mm. You know you like to be in control? Mm? Yes. Is there a problem with that? Well, that depends on how you want to exercise that control. If you're telling me there are limits, that puts you in control. <sighs> you know, I should know better than to argue with a lawyer. <sighs> I think I'm a bit drunk. <laughs> well, so am I, baby. I'm drunk on the evening, champagne, your perfume. No, Dev, I'm serious. <sighs> There's something I did, I mean, it's something I said. No. You've been wonderful. Too wonderful. Me and Karen can manage, love. Mum, if I don't go out now, I'll probably end up stuck in that room on that settee with a box of tissues and the rest of that brandy. Oh, nobody'd blame you. And if it helps. What, let them win? I don't think so. Right. Showtime. <laughs> you okay? You don't have to, you know. So people keep telling me. Look, there's only one more rule from now on. Never mention your friend's name again, OK? My friend. Good. Yes, Steve? Back, please. Last flight to Malaga went an hour back. We should have come earlier. No, she was coming in a bit fine. You can see checked in just before takeoff. You sure she was on it? Well, customer lists are confidential. So now what? Well, looks like that's it. Have a good flight. Thank you. Thank you. We're on our way now, sweetheart. New money, new home, new life, and no nasty daddies. Eh? Hey. What the hell are you doing here? How could you do this to me? Don't cause a scene, Peter. I've said all I want to say. After that stunt you pulled in the Rovers, I gave up everything for you. I gave up everything for you and Simon. You yeah, will I've got a flight to catch. Please wait, just a, just a phone number, anything, please, just so I can see him again one day, please. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Then I'm not letting you take him. Oh, no, no, you can't do this, Peter. I'm his dad. Just give him to me. You've already caused enough trouble. No. You don't put him back in his buggy now, Peter. I mean it. 
There's police and security all over this airport. Well, so what? Well, let them come. They'll not let you on the plane anyway. Not when they know I'm his dad. I've got rights. You can't stop me. Oh, yeah, and what use are they going to be to you when you're in prison? You're already under a caution. You take him away and I'll make sure they throw away the key. And I'm going to take him back anyway, so... Give him to her, Peter. What? How could you? How could you say that? Because I know she won't hesitate to do everything she could to hurt you. Don't give her the satisfaction. He deserves everything he gets. No. 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 Come on. Come on, Peter. Come on. Why? Come on, Peter. Sydney, Australia. Yeah, I've got family there. Real family, not a bigamist husband. You can't. I won't let you do this. Oh, I can, I will. I'm not going to let you make a mess of my child's life like you do to everyone else around you, Peter. Please, Lucy. Please, wait. I understand what you're feeling, OK? <laughs> for Simon's sake. This is for Simon's sake. The other side of the world's hardly far enough, but it's the best I can do. You know what grieves me, Peter? I honestly did love you. We could have had the best life together. If only just for once you'd been a real man, instead of a sorry apology for one. I've been playing that for a while. Thanks. Might need to twist the knife in a bit further. Well, it's not inconceivable that you could go over now and again. Oh, come on, Dad. It's the other side of the world. She couldn't have gotten further away from me if she tried, could she? It's a pity your mum doesn't still work at the travel agent. She could have sorted you out a special deal. No, that's enough. Just as you don't know what it's like to feel love for a child. Well, he can't have loved it that much, can he? Otherwise, he wouldn't screwed up. Yeah, well, you're the last person to pronounce on other people's problems. Actually, for once, I agree with her. He's had this coming for a long time. Oh, this is great. Talk about kicking a man when he's down. I've just lost everything I ever had. I mean, what is it with this family, eh? Well, you've got my sympathy. Whatever else he's done, I've never doubted his love for Simon for a minute. Yeah, but what good's that if he's gonna go around marrying everything in a skirt? Yes, all right, Deirdre. Point taken. Dev? Yeah. Uh, well, no, I just thought I'd see you. I'm fine. Good, only last night wasn't, you know, a great success. No, I'm sorry about that. No, 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 no. come on, it's me, you should be sorry. And, and, you know, if I was if I was going too quickly, then, um... No, it wasn't that. Listen, why don't we meet, meet up and talk about this? I was just wondering, you're free tonight? I, um, can't tonight. I've got a lot of work to do. Work? <laughs> on a weekend? Well, no. I've got a big day in court on Monday. <laughs> Listen, Maya, if you're trying to let me down gently, then I'm much... I'm not doing that, Dad, I swear. Yeah, that's what you want. See you soon. Yeah. <coughs> never mind, Dev. The course of true love never did run smooth. Yes. Now that's our settle then. What? The Gazette. Coming round to the shop at 12 o'clock to launch my new pie. Well, if you can't see, that's going to make things worse. Forecast spreading malicious rumours about my produce. It has to be nipped in bud. It were a couple of moron that no one believes anyway that's been gobbing off, that's all. It were a couple of sparks in Pudding Lane what set off the great fire of London. Well, if you do, get Gazette, yes. you will be fanning flames. Be all over town by tomorrow. Yes, folk will know about the new addition to the earlier meat repertoire. They'll know what Kirk and Les have been saying. Journalists ain't stupid, Dad. They're trying to sniff things out. Then they'll have two stories to choose from, won't they? One about an highly respected family butcher, Q Photograph, you, me and our Joshua. Do you want us to be there? Certainly, my love, oh yes. And the other, a cock and bull tale from a couple of slack-jawed cretins who spent half their time in prison. Kirk's never been in prison. I said half, didn't I? Hey, I've been looking for you. You also? I want to know what you're going to do about the bookies. Oh, I don't know yet. Well, when you do, could you get me now? 
Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I can't wait. I've got so much on my mind. OK, but when I do make a decision, I will let you know. I promise. Cheers. You played a blind and earlier tonight, man. Even by your standards. Yeah. Oh, right. You're going to have a go at me and all. What were you thinking, man? Look, I thought Lucy would give me another chance, OK? And if that meant me seeing Simon... Anyway, what do you mean by my standards? That's a bit rich coming from the likes of you, isn't it? I've never humiliated a woman in public like that. Hang on. This is the same Shelley we're talking about, isn't it? That one you tried to get into bed when me and her were engaged. I thought we promised never to mention that again. Well, it looks like you need a bit of reminding, because I'll tell you what, mate, I'll be damned if I'm taking any lectures from the likes of you. At least when it was over, I left her alone. I didn't keep going back upsetting her. Look, it was a difficult decision between Simon and Shelley I had to make, all right? I didn't crack on like I had some highfalutin motive, either. I can't even believe I'm hearing this. After all that trouble I went to to keep the peace between you and Shelley. You'd have lost that job ages ago if it weren't for me, Kieran. I nearly did lose that job when it all came out about you and your other life. Well, that's what makes it for, isn't it? I told you time and again, forget Lucy. I tried. I don't think I can help you anymore. What does that mean? Look, if, if I'm going to marry Sunit, right, I've got to keep my job. I can't go upsetting Bev and Shelley again. So we're not mates anymore? I'm in a very awkward position right now. I just hope you can understand that. Fine. It's very kind of you to come. You must be terribly busy, love. Hey, shouldn't you be working, Mr. William? I heard this was happening, so I slipped out. I didn't know you were a fan of Fred's pies. He's been trying to do my hot pot down for one of these new ones. I'm watching every move he makes. <laughs> Really rude. Um, I'll, uh, I'll say a few words about the pie, right. and then uh, we'll hand out a few free sa samples, and uh, you can take a few pictures, right? Fine. Yeah. Let's get started, shall we? Yeah, you are. Oh, ah, yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, le lady, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today in the esteemed presence of the Weatherfield Gazette to launch Elliot and Sons' new delicacy. Using only the finest ingredients and skills. But why did it give me salmonella poisoning? Yeah, and me. It's a public health hazard that shop. It should be shut down. Local rabble, take the notice. If you know what it is, then, Pice. Well said, love. And he didn't even give us any compensation. Clear off, you two. I said clear off. Yeah, just ignore him. Well, it's a fair question, Mr. Elliot. If the pies have made the mill, how are you going to answer it? Drivers don't like it. It's too expensive. Stuff the drivers, Stephen. Dev, they're our biggest asset. The best thing we've done lately is employ a woman driver. Tracy is meeting a real need out there. Yeah, well, I agree with that last statement right reluctantly. This is where we score the personal touch, not technology. I'm not even sure whether it's any good. Oh, come on. OK. We'll see, shall we? We'll send two drivers out to the same location, one with the street atlas, the other one with this sat-nav, and then we'll see who comes back first. What, like, borrow a car? I can arrange that. I know. No, I mean, what's it going to prove anyway? Right? Since no one on the firm wants it, right, a person with a sat nav is going to lose on purpose. Well, then you drive the car. Yeah, and who drives the other one? Duh, someone with a route already planned, bing, what, like you? <clears throat> no, one of the others. <laughs> that you tipped off? No. Oh, really? Now, how do I know that? Well, you just have to trust me. There's no wrong with them pies. Hey, hey, you. I bet Dracula himself had his bangs into them. Then how come nobody else has been taken poorly? Well, there's two of us been laid low. How many more do you want? Hey, and if they're that good, why did you come round to our house the other night? Trying to bribe me and him to stay quiet? Oh, I did no such thing. Swamp cans of beer he offered me. Oh, yeah, sounds like Fred, that. <laughs> See? You think I'd be that daft to get the press here if that were true? No comment. <laughs> well, why don't around and give everybody samples? No, good idea. Then they can taste them. All I can say is don't be far from a lobby if you're having one of them. Now, see, that's enough. There's no wrong with them pies. And to prove it, I'm going to give a piece to my own grandson. Claire, fetch our Joshua. How old's your grandson? 18 months. 19 months. And he means more to me than anything else. But you'll risk one of these pies on him. There is no risk! That's the whole point! Now then, our Joshua. I'm sorry, Mr. Elliot, but I can't let you do this. Hey? Just 
not right using an innocent child like this. At least she's got some sense. Will you get out at road? I'm paid to use my discretion over what's in Joshua's best interests. Aye, and it's this business what pays your shift. But I still won't let him be used as a guinea pig. Now, you can do what you like, but Joshua is not having any of that pie, and that is final. Hey, 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 get that down. Hey, hey, that. All right, you got it now. Oh, good, I'm fine. Les, I've got a job for you. Right. You see, you're not exactly up against the brain of Britain. Right, you sure you haven't primed it? Red hot fresh pie. Sit up, you. Here. What's this? <laughs> Red Lion, where? It's about 12 miles away. Look it up in your A to Z. Dad's going to be on the same job. Hey, what for? Because he's using sat-nav and no map. First one back wins. What's that in aid of? Just to see how good it is. Well, that's not fair. He's bound to win. Well, we'll see, won't we? Oh, right. And if I lose, does that mean we get sat-nav installed? Well, I'm not having that held against me. It won't be. Hey, how am I getting paid? I'm not doing it otherwise. Do you think you're being set up? Look, you'll get your money. Right. Now, what happens when we get there? Right, there's a bloke called Declan works behind the bar. I'll give you each an envelope to bring back that way. I know you both got there, OK? Mm -hmm. Les? Go on, then. Right, time starts now. Hang on, hang on! He's exploiting an innocent child. Exploiting? You talk as if I'm trying to show him up chimneys. Well, for what it's worth, I agree with her. You what? You was more worried about your own reputation, your own grandson. Well, if you want something wrong with pies. Not you and all. Well, you've got to be careful at that age, especially with spice and stuff. So you do think I'm trying to poison him, do you? No, I'm saying you wasn't thinking straight. You only did it when Kirk and Lesson, you tried to bribe him. Bribe's a bit strong. Dad, the fact is, you're in an hole and you keep on digging. If you want to blame someone, then take a look in the mirror and stop laying it all off on Claire. Because on this one, I'm behind her all the way. Any thoughts on what you might do next? Well, yeah. I don't think there's anything around here for me anymore. Why are you bound to feel that now? A couple of weeks, everything will look different. No. I feel like a pariah. Half the people around here don't want to talk to me. Deirdre, she can't even stand to look at me. Can't drink in my local. Where would you go? Oh, I've already decided that. I'm going to go back to Plymouth. Plymouth? Yeah. But that means I'd hardly see you. I know, but that's where all my contacts are. There's an old mate of mine, he's agreed to put me up on his floor till I find my feet. You know, once the book is sold and the money's sorted out, I'll be fine, don't worry. No, look, I really think you should wait. This is a knee-jerk reaction. No, it's not. Even my best mate, after 20-odd years, is not talking to me. Oh, Peter, please, just think about it. You're in no fit state for a start. What, do you think I'm going to do something daft? Come on, don't. Well, it's not just that. Look, Dad, please. I've made my mind up. Am I interrupting something? Peter's thinking of leaving Weatherfield. Oh, when? Tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Huh. I, uh, hope your ears were burning this morning. Why? Because no less a person than Dev Allahan admitted you were a welcome addition here. Really? Mm-hmm. So I won't be getting the sack then? No, nah, seriously, things are going very well so far. So you're pleased with me? Very. Now, are you able to work the evening? Is Les Battersby a loser? No, it would seem. Hey, you're back. Where's Deb? Well, you're still out there. Well, hey! Does this mean no satellites will be watching over me? It would seem so. Did I do well or what? You're so stupid. No, you're not. Hey, you're back. You can't beat an old-fashioned map, Deb. <laughs> Where'd you get a cab? A thermite town. A thermite town. And where did I get the navigation equipment? Um, some army surplus store? I, uh, I feel an excuse coming on. <clears throat> well, what's happened? What's happened? Every time I went on a, a roundabout under a flyover, right, and there was four on the route that you chose. Was it? Yeah. Little Miss Robo voice on the dashboard starts to sound like she's just dropped acid. What do you mean? What I mean? Right, the instructions went haywire. I was on one roundabout for five minutes before the thing told me which way to go! Well, listen, you know, I mean, if you want to do it again... Hey, now, listen, why don't we just forget it? All right, it's not worth the hassle. Nobody wants it. It's too expensive, right? So you win, all right? You win. Well, if you say so, Dave. Yeah. But listen, I wasn't fooled. I was not fooled. I just got more important things on my mind, all right? I'll see ya. Excellent! 
So. Look, I'm sorry about this morning. Sticking the boot in about Lucy. I didn't mean to be nasty. Yes, you did. But that's the way we work, innit? You stab my back and I stab yours, eh? Yeah, but even for me, it was pretty tactless. Yeah, do you know what? I think you're just jealous because I've made a bigger mess of my life than you have of yours. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna miss you. The only person around here I can actually have a laugh with. Yeah? Oh, well, look on the bright side. At least I'm not gonna aggress you up to Roy Cropper, am I? You will keep that to yourself, won't you? Yeah, of course I will. But I do think you should tell Steve, though, Tracy. You know, I didn't find out I had a baby until it was too late. Look what it's done to me. Come on. The topic isn't open for discussion, Peter. OK, all right, it's fine. <laughs> Where are you off? Oh, Sal, um, I'm sorry, I, uh, I meant to ring you. I'm, I'm going away. Where? To Plymouth. What, on holiday? No, for good. And what about my job? Well, I'll, I'll put you a cheque in the post. So I'm fired? I couldn't keep the shop open, could I? Oh, well, thanks for telling me. I'm sorry. I would have turned up tomorrow if I hadn't bumped into you. It's just that I've had that much on my mind. You know that, don't you? Yeah, well, I wish it sorted you. Look, I've had more on my mind than your flaming job, Sal. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. It's all right, Peter. I should have learnt by now. You only think about yourself. It's my fault entirely. Sorry, Have a good time, won't you? I will. Oh. You walk this time of year on that beach, but now all your troubles are made. <laughs> I hope so. Oh. Kieran's right, you'll come back a new woman. Come on, love, get in. Good timing. Ah, oh, well, onwards and upwards, eh, Peter? Yeah, I'm sorry I've caused you so much trouble, Deirdre. I'd no choice, had I? Well, maybe I can make it up to you, eh, one day, eh? Right, OK, see you. Take care. And you, hey, look after yourself and that baby. I will. Now listen, promise you'll always keep in touch. Of course. And I'll always be here for you, whatever happens, you know that? Yes, I know that. And I'm sorry I couldn't be more help. Hey, and don't blame yourself for my mistakes, OK? Dad, you've been absolutely brilliant over all this. OK. Right, I'm off. Right, well, what time do you expect to be there? Uh, oh, I don't know, four or five hours. There's no rush. Not as if I've got any wives waiting for me. Safe journey. Bye. Gotta be face. I'm sorry. Breaking down the street full of such good looking women. <laughs> you need glasses. No, no. Everything about me works perfectly. Except your chat up lines. <laughs> Pretty shy, really. Don't get much practice. Who are you? Just a poor builder in distress. That sounds like a contradiction in terms. <laughs> See? A few bad apples and the whole barrel's condemned. What do you want? Just to see you smile. And to find out when this garage opens. Oh, um, any time now. The owner just lives there, number 13. OK. Thanks. Enjoy meeting you. Come on. Oh, I 
do that, Mr. Baldwin. It might fall apart. Then I'd be able to get to my parking space, wouldn't I? Oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Kevin, <laughs> this got anything to do with you? Oh, sort of, yeah. Bloke throw down, right there, right where it stands. I said I'll have a look at it for him when I finish my breakfast. Well, get rid of it, will you? I've got a lot of work to do today. But I'd like to oblige, but tired on, shut the breakdown truck out early, so it's going to have to wait. What do you mean, wait? That's my parking space. It's blocking me access. <laughs> well, I'm not blocking it. I didn't leave it there. Have you got the key? Yeah. Right, I'll get in it and steer it. You two give it a push. What? Hey, there's a lot of stuff in the back of that thing. And even if we could move it, how do we get it past this? <sighs> Where are these cowboys? Roy's Rose having breakfast. Oh. Look, OK, I'll uh, go and try and sort something out, OK? No, please, let me have this pleasure. <sighs> on the evening shifts, is there? Just I'm having a few problems in that direction at the moment. I may own the pub, but I don't run it. You'll have to ask your boss here. And the answer's no. I need you behind the bar of a night at the moment. Yeah, it's just awkward on the home front at the moment. Well, I'm sorry, but it's your mate's fault. If he hadn't cocked up everybody's lives, then Shelley'd still be here. I wouldn't be on my own, and you wouldn't be working every hour God sends. Uh, excuse me. Anyone got a digger and a lorry parked outside my factory? Over here, mate. Some sort of problem. Well, you could say that. Do you realise you're blocking my parking space? I didn't, man. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not intentional. The old passion wagon just coughed and died where it's standing. Well, can you get out there and revive it? I'm expecting some deliveries. Yeah, it's all under control. We've got this really nice boat. Was... Ken, is it? Kevin. Kevin, that's right. Just lives over the way. Should be well into fixing it by now. Shouldn't trouble you much longer. It's troubling me already. Now, I want that pile of junk moved, and I want it moved now. Come on, mate, be reasonable. We just got our breakfast here, haven't we? You can forget your breakfast. I want that heap of scrap moved. Otherwise, I'm going to phone the police and get them to tow it away. Hey, that heap of scrap, as you call it, happens to keep me and my mate here off the Dell kit. Are you going to move those vehicles? As soon as finished. Promise. All right. All right, you play it that way. You see my uniform anywhere? I was going to say Scotch mist. Oh, very nice. Hey, mm. you're as good as me. Nice right, cheek, get off. Yeah, you're turning into a regular little housewife. I, aren't you? you can always do it yourself, you know. No, no, no. You carry on. I love a bit of domesticity. You even know you're good, Ian. He knows a lot of things you don't know about me. Yeah, I know, but I can't wait to find out. Oi, come on, none of that. Work. Oh, come on, spice boy. Oh, just let a girl get to school, will you? Ooh, ow! And if you're really good, I might have done something nice for your tea when you get back. Mm. Mm. See ya. OK, yeah. See ya. They're just sat there, like two monkeys, bold as brass, grinning, as if I wasn't there. So they refused to move the game? No, they said they'd do it after their breakfast. Oh. OK, well, yeah, we'll just have to wait then. No, it is not OK, and we're not going to wait. No two-bit builders are going to get the better of me on my turf. Hey, hey, Mr. Baldwin, just calm down a bit, will you? You're going to put your blood pressure through the roof. He's right, you know. I shouldn't be worried about this at my age. So you get out there and go and do something. Me? Yeah, you. That's what I pay you for, to sort me problems out. I don't even know what they look like. Oh, well, that's easily remedied. Yeah, but I mean, they're like, big or what? <laughs> How do I know? They were sat down, weren't they? Mike, are you sure this is in my job description? Well, it is now. So don't stand there. Go out, go on, do something. Go on. Is uh, Devin? Deb, visitor. Maria. What are you doing here? Well, I um, just wanted to catch you before I got to work. I've been trying to call you all morning. So, what's so important that you have to see me before work, babe? Well, I realised we weren't really getting anywhere the other day, and um, I just wanted to um, put us back on track. Well, now, isn't that interesting? Hmm? <laughs> What's the matter? You don't think we're worth pursuing? Oh, I did. Until I saw you kissing another man last night. Hmm? Getting into his car. Yeah, I saw it all, babe. Technicolor. What are you doing? You're spying on me. No, actually, I was calling on you. On oh, flowers. I even had a bunch of flowers. But unfortunately, somebody else got there first. Look, I can explain everything. Yeah. And I'd like that, but not here. Come on. <clears throat> right, people, could you look after the place? I'll be out for a while. Yeah? Yeah. So will I. Now he's gone, I'll only be a minute. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> 
That is a great idea. I should give you a rise. Yeah, it looks a pretty face. Problem solved. Got fuel pipe. Should be all right now. Great, thanks, mate. What's the damage? Yeah, I just call it Senna. Only took me five minutes. You sure? Yeah. Oh, your point then? Well, won't say no. Cheers, lads. Nice to deal with reasonable people. Uh, regarding the uh, car, I think it's probably only a matter of saying sorry to Mike. Really? Yeah, yeah, I think an apology would do the job. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> Mike! I believe. Mr Baldwin to you. OK, Mr Baldwin. Now I think you'll agree we've both wasted each other's time quite enough. Would I? Yeah. I'd say things have got a bit out of hand. And if I've played my part in that, then I'm sorry. Really? Yeah, really. So, how about we bury the hatchet and you move your car? Well, I'd really like to do that, but uh, I've got a cup of coffee in there. And I don't want it to get cold, do I? Me. Eh? So, who is he then? Hmm? This bloke. Not so much your uncle? No, your godfather? No. No, I didn't think so. Because when you kiss a man like you kissed him... Please, Dev, I'm finding this very difficult. Oh, so please make it easy on yourself and tell me the truth. Tell me why I didn't know anything about him. Because if you knew, I thought you'd... dump me. No. Well, you didn't want that? No, of course I didn't. Mm -hmm. That's what being involved with two men at the same time, some kind of big... Some kind of turn-on for you, is it? No, it's nothing like that. No? So tell me what it's like. What's your problem? He's married. That's my problem. Mm. Oh, that was really good. In fact, I might have another one. How about you? Oh, come on, mate. Move your car. You prove your point. And I'm going to make sure that, that point goes right home. Look, he's losing money while that gear's blocked in. I can't tell you how good that makes me feel. He needs that digger, mate. You better move your car before he does something you both might regret. What could a simpleton like him do to hurt me? Mike, you might want to come outside. Like, right now. Why? What's happening? You'll see soon enough. You so much as touch that car, right? And I'll take you for everything you've got. Wouldn't be a lot, mate. Look, stop him. Tell him to stop, will you? Kevin, I want that car checked over. Any dents, any scratches? You wanted to talk to me? I suppose you think you're being clever, do you? Just trying to do my job. Look, you so much as touch that car, and I'll take you through every court in the land. Been in most of them in my time. Yes, I've heard. Kevin! Nothing. Tommy? No, I ain't touched it. And I won't. If you do me a really big favour, I'm moving. <laughs> no way. Look, I'm trying to be reasonable. No. No, you're trying to get my back up, and I tell you what, you're succeeding. OK. That's the way you want it. Paul, start her up again. Paul's OK. He's passed his tests and everything. But he's nowhere near as experienced as me. And these things do need skill. Uh, you're bluffing, you think so. All right! All right, turn it off! Stop it! OK, I'll move it. That's very reasonable of you, Mr Baldwin. Thank you. Don't you thank me. I won't forget this. You think you pulled one over on me here, don't you? Well, you're wrong. You made a very silly mistake making an enemy of me. And I'll tell you something else. If I so much as see you round here again, you'll live to regret it. So who is he? Does it matter? Yeah, it matters. He's called Gavin, that any help? Gavin might explain the castle dates. Yeah, I'm sorry about those. So why get involved with a married man? It wasn't difficult, I fancied him. <laughs> Good. Any kids? Two. Oh, excellent. Well, it didn't bother you? No, not the time, no. Well, in that case, I can't really see any point of us trying to make a go of it. Playing the moral card, are we? No, I'm just trying to look at things honestly. You could have destroyed three lives doing this. He was getting a divorce. I wasn't out to ruin his marriage. You weren't looking for a long-term relationship. No, it was a bit of fun. <laughs> Is that what I am? You make me laugh. 
I enjoy your company. And? What do you mean? I mean, I'm not just looking for a bit of fun. Right? I'm looking for a little bit more than that. I see. Well, that girl in your shop looked at me with more than a passing interest. Anything there I should know about? Sunita's uh, just someone who works for me. I think we can have a great time. I think we can really make things work. But you have to choose. It's him or me. Not enough room for us both. Well, that's where I am. Honest of you. Well, what's a relationship without honesty, right? Okay. Let's get you off. Yeah. I'm gonna need some time. It's a big step. I've been seeing him for a while now. Give it some serious thought. Yeah, well. Hey, have you seen this? Uh, Butch your bread. It's humble pie. <laughs> That'll be a first. Weatherfield Butcher, Fred Elliott's plans to push his new meat pies were scuppered yesterday. When his grandson's nanny opened the refuse to let the little lad get his gnashes round the controversial goods to prove to local doubters that they were not the source of a local health scare. That's enough, I say, that's enough. That's more than I need to hear in my own pub. Hang on a minute, Fred, there's more. Now, see, if you read any more from that paper, the pair of you will be out that door. Go on, then. Pull us a couple of pints and we'll shut up, eh, Kirk? No, this is the bottom of the barrel. You don't want any of this, it'll make you ill. Oh, no, don't give us that. I've had the bottom of the barrel before. Not in my pub. We have that with us. Will you shut up, you dumbo? Oh, no. when were this? Now we have them pies of yours. Strong. We cast them off Kieran because he was a bit broke. I see. Now, oh, Kieran. Gave you some beer from bottom of the barrel, did he? Well, that is interesting, Kirk. Isn't it, Leslie? Really? Yeah. Because that's what made you ill. It weren't my pies, it was bottom of barrel. Y you can't be too sure. I'm sure enough to tell you that if you ever, ever bring my meat products into disrepute again, you'll hear from my lawyers. Now, clear out the pair of you. Why are you going? I want to just arrive. I've been kicked out. Why? Because he can't keep his big trap shut, that's why. Oh, so I'm not going to be here on my own then? Looks like it. What's the matter? We've been here before. I thought we agreed it was a mistake. We could really have something together, you know, you and me. What about Sunita? I'm sure you could manage us both. Excuse me, I must say. Who's that? Hey, who are you? Who are you? Fizz, Candice. Oh, Maria, why is your arm going off? Shh, there's someone here, look. Oh, it's me brother, you pillock. You weren't here when we got back last night. It's about time you got up. Is that my bread? <gasps> my new top! Okay, okay, before you say, it'll be out by the end of the day. You sure about this? Positive. And we're talking weeks rather than months. It's like I said, the sooner your Mrs. McCarthy the better. Oh, Kieran, I can't believe it. Morning. Hiya. Oi! Oi! What's up with you? Can't you take a hint? You what? Do whatever you've got to do around here and then scram, all right? Get down with us, will you, Paul? We'll do, boss. What do you reckon? What? You, you moving in there? Where do you reckon I should stick it? I won't answer that. Well, be back. I've seen that face somewhere before. We're early for a social call. Yeah, I wanted to see you. I spoke to Gavin last night. And? Well, I thought it's now or never. No use stretching these things out. So how did he take it? Oh, there's lots of crying, wailing, gnashing of teeth, and, um, that was just me. It's the right thing. It doesn't feel like it. It's hard, isn't it, saying goodbye to somebody you really care about? <sighs> yep. Have you spoken to Sunita yet? No. no. I really haven't had the time. It's just... Uh... I've just put the kettle on. Mm. Tea, coffee? Uh, no. No, no thanks, no. It's not like you. He normally has one on the hour, every hour. Cheers, darling. Thank you. 
<laughs> well, I'm sure you'll find the right moment. Ashley, you know, I'm not too sure about this what? sacking Sunita. What? You know, she's been working for me for like a long time. You're going to keep on seeing her, aren't you? Uh, it's not like we're having a relationship. How do I know that? Because, darling, I'm telling you. But you're with each other every day. Uh, it's work. It's work. OK. Oh, and Gavin. Even though it's supposedly finished between us, I'll go round to his every afternoon for a long lunch. Well, that's different. How? I've given up a lot for you, Dev. I sincerely hope I haven't been wasting my time. In here, is she? There's a me little chesney come here. You're a flaming disgrace. You are? Leaving your nine-year-old son on his own. You're with Elsie Lewis. What, are you from Briar Street? My face looked after me. You know, I should report you to social flaming services. One night, one night in nine years, and this is what I get. I, uh, I, I thought you'd asked to babysit. I did. She must have got confused. Oh, a word about vice lads. Don't listen to anything she says. She's a compulsive liar. What do you mean you didn't tell her? You've been with her all morning. Oh, no, but it's been awkward, you know. There's been a member of staff oh, in the back. I, mean, I didn't get the chance. Fine. Then I know where I stand. My, uh... Get your hands off me. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, take a break. What, another one? Yeah. How long? But I, I, I really don't care. Top, please, just, just go. <laughs> You're the boss? Me. Yeah? This your place? I've got the key to the door, yeah. <laughs> Never been 21 before. <laughs> <laughs> so what sort of stuff do you do? Building, plumbing, electrics, you name it, we'll do it, what are you after? Well, the job. Have you got anything? <laughs> no, he hasn't. Sorry, son, I've got Paul here. Why would I possibly want anyone else? Look, hear me out, mate. I've got loads of experience, not just in labouring. I'm a brickie and a spark. I've done house bashing, you build a lot. <laughs> brickie and a spark, eh? You heard the man, there's no vacancies. Sorry, son, don't need anyone else. I'll stick the kettle on, boss. Right. Are you, uh... No, are you sure about that? Positive. Right, well, I'll, uh, drop my CV in, then. You're all right. I need lads who can build walls, and I'll write about them. Yeah, but... <coughs> Sunita. Hi. Hi. Do you mind if I, um... Not at all. Yeah. 29th of December. The what? The wedding. Right. Uh, well done. <laughs> can we, um... Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't really know where to, to, to start. It's... Uh, I'm serious. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, things aren't going very well in the business. Oh, no? Yeah, I'm employing too many um, staff for a start. My accountant, Barry, well, you know Barry, right? Oh. Yeah, yeah. He's told me that I've got to uh, uh, make cutbacks. Well, you can't sack Todd. He's only just got a new flat. Technically, you were employed after Todd. Sorry? Oh, you know, you, you, you left, you remember, and then you came back again. But, you know, that's, 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 uh, of course, by the by, you know, water under the bridge, as they say. Anyway, what I'm, uh, what I'm trying to say is, and uh, I think you'll agree with me with this, is that things have been, uh, difficult between, between us, uh, for, for some time, yeah? Hang it's on, Dev. What are you trying to say? I'm talking about your role within the shop. You're trying to sack me? Well, no, I wouldn't put it like that. I... After everything I've done for you? Darling, I just... That is the that... lowest of the low. Sunita, wait, we can talk about... I thought I meant more to you than that. just can't believe the nerve of him. I take it we're talking about Dev. Well, what have I ever done wrong? Am I ever late? No. Would you call me lazy? No, you walk your socks off, babe. So, how could he do this to me, then? I'm his best worker, he knows that. And he sacks me just because we've got a history. It ain't fair. I know. Maybe it's for the best, eh? How? Well, it's not exactly an ideal situation, is it? You're working for your ex. You can get another job. You don't understand, do you? It wasn't just a job to me. I've worked there for over two years now. I know everyone who walks through that door, I call them by name. I ask them how their mother or their sister is. They chat to me about the troubles or tell me the good news. You can't just build that up overnight, you know. I didn't know it meant so much to you. Well, it does. No Sunita. No Sunita. Good. 
I wish I could say the same. What, you're missing her already? Well, of course. Like I miss Todd when it's his day off, because I'm stuck here when I could be out on business somewhere. Well, you'll get someone else. How did you take it? Quite well, considering. Good. Sounds like you handled it perfectly. I don't know about that, darling. She looks at me like I just smacked her in the face. Well, you know what I mean. She didn't kick up a fuss or anything. Honey, you'd find a way. <laughs> oh. some toast if you want some air there, Kirky lad. No, oh, thanks. Uh. Yeah. Right, this ain't gonna work, ma'am. There's no room at my flat, and he's driving the girls mad. But you can't just dump him here. Well, I haven't got time to take him to school. I'm already late for work as it is. I'm not going to school anyway. I'm ill. You can't be. It's my day off. And I've got the hairdressers at two. Well, take him with you. The coffee, we Roy? Ah, uh, you wouldn't rather have an orange juice. You do realise that caffeine can cross the placenta. Some say that it overactivates the nervous system. Oh, for God's sake, just give me a coffee, will you, Roy? It's bad enough having to buy clothes in a size 14 without all this and all. Oh, uh, yes, by, by the by, <clears throat> about Monday, I, I've drawn up a list. Ooh, are we going to get presents and all? It's a list of details to be ironed out. For instance, would you like to share a taxi to the register office? Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, last time we shared a taxi, we got into all sorts of trouble, didn't we? Wait, what is this? You feed me all these lines about how hard it's been for you, working together since we split up, and how it can't be easy for me either. In fact, you make it positively sound like you're doing me a favour, and all the time you've been lying. No, what? No! Oh, come on, Dev. Be straight with me for once. Why did you sack me? Well, I didn't sack you, darling. I let you go. Oh, there you go again, putting your spin on things. Why did you sack me. But you know why we've been through all this. Okay. I'll make it easy for you. It was Maya, wasn't it? What? No. She heard we had history and she wanted to get rid. Yeah, no, no. Who told you that? No, no, no. Don't tell me. It was your Irish boyfriend, right? He's just trying to cause trouble That's again. That's right. Try and blame him. Just like he tried to blame you. You're all that busy trying to square up to each other. There's never a thought for me caught in the middle. And now Maya's joining in. Well, I won't be treated like some Shoved around wherever you want me. Look, shh, okay, look. Now, if I said that I'd done this for her, and I'm saying, like, if, then it wouldn't be to hurt you. Right? Why? It'd be because I was protecting my own relationship. Come, come sit down. Come on. See ya. <laughs> See ya. Sooner him than me. I know where I'd rather spend a Friday night. Mm -hmm. Hi. About Monday. Oh, not you and all. Look, I don't want to think about it. No, well, neither do we, but we have to, whether we like it or not. Now then. Roy says you're going to make your own way there. Uh, yeah. You do realise you're going to need a witness. Well, I'll just drag someone off the street. Look, I don't want anyone knowing about this. It's embarrassing enough as it is. Look, the ceremony is booked for a quarter past five, then. Afterwards, of course, we'll go our separate ways. No. You mean I'm not going to get a honeymoon? I was looking forward to somewhere hot and sunny. It's all right, Roy. She's having you on. It's a warped sense of humour. You know, I did think, given what we're all going through together, that we might be able to act in a more civilised manner. Oh, I'll never be civilised. Remember that. I'm only in this for the money. Here you are. You're all milk, aren't you? Yeah, I thought I'd nip into town and do a bit of uh, Christmas shopping, beat the rush, you know? Well, maybe we could all go. Eh? Get a bite to eat somewhere. No, I've already put your casserole in the oven. Oh, the not mind. Just a thought. Right, well, to be ready in about an hour. I'll see you later, yeah? Yeah. Have a nice time. Oh. All to uses. You can, of course, just put on your down that way. Your roses love them. Fleshy side. I thought you were supposed to be ill. I feel better now. Get up, you lad. Give us down there, quick. Cheers, mate. Not ill as ever. What is it? A present. For me? Yeah. And for Kirky. What is it? Oh. Oh, da da! A bunk bed. A what? Cool. <laughs> neat, eh? Neat. A bunk bed with him. Well, if you don't like it, you know what you can do. I think it's a brilliant idea, Les. What do you say, Chesney? Thanks, Uncle Len. You're welcome. And it's Uncle Les, by the way. I get more up. I've got loads of uncles, me. But then they go. I don't see him again. 
Now then, Chesney, you don't want to bore Uncle Les with family history. Can I help you? No, it's fine. I can help myself. I'm sorry, she just marched in. Oh, it's all right. What do you want? Professional advice. You see, my boss has just sacked me. And I want to sue him for unfair dismissal. Is this a joke? Am I laughing? Maybe you'd be better off seeking somebody else's advice. Oh, no. I want you. You've been highly recommended. Come to spare on you, is he? Get lost, will you? <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, I can't so apologise. I shouldn't have shown you up in front of your mates. No, it was my fault. It all got out of hand. And I suppose I was showing off a little bit. Look at me, I live in my flat with my own fella. Yeah, then your fella came home and they all realised what a plunker he was. Mm. But anyway, I thought I'd turn up and give you a bit of support. That's if you're not too embarrassed to be seen with me. Of course I'm not. Good. Only thing is, uh, my mum's coming. I didn't realise Martin would be here. No, I didn't know I was going to be here. Right, well, um, I'll go then. No, no, you're all right. I'll go. Look, it doesn't have to be either or, you know. This is supposed to be about my future. And, well, you're both part of that, aren't you? What reason did he give you for making you redundant? None. At least not a proper one. Well, he must have said something. What, like, my girlfriend doesn't want you here, that sort of thing? No, he didn't. Oh, we waffled on a bit about how maybe it were better if we didn't work together, but I don't think that counts as a reason, do you? Did he give you written notice? Oh, no. He just sat me there and then, in the pub. Hey, that's the point. That would mean we've got witnesses, wouldn't it? So what do you reckon? Uh, it's, um, too soon to say. I'd have to look into it further. Hey, come on, you must have some idea. Cases like this are complicated. Aye, they are, aren't they? They start off seeming like one thing, but the deeper you dig. Still, you must have an opinion. Well, on the basis of what you've told me so far, yes. I have to admit, it looks like you have a case for unfair dismissal. No, she's always been a bright kid, Katie. Me and Ange knew she'd end up at uni. Just always thought we'd be part of it. Helping to pick which one, sorting it all out. So, why don't you go to this grace thing, then? You know why? She's made a bed, she can lie in it. Anyway, how do you know about that? Well, I mentioned it. He's gone, hasn't he? And you know why? He'll be trying to stop her going to uni so she can stay with him. He wouldn't do that. As if you haven't messed her life up enough already. Well, we'll see about that. Blame me now. I take it that's my dad, yeah. A bunk bed? Yeah. What's worse is your brother's bag's in the top. Oh, well, we're not going to get up to much now, are we? Not with my brother in the same room. <laughs> You'll need to get top grades if you want to study medicine. It's very competitive. Oh, sometimes I think it'd be easier just to go into nursing. No, if you can't pull more than that. Oh, sorry, Martin. I... No, no, you're right. Look, if I had your brains, that's what I'd have done as well. You've got to go for it, Katie. Otherwise, you'll be letting yourself down. Yeah, but I'm not sure I want to go to uni. Oh, I don't want to move away. Well, maybe you won't have to move away. No, your dad's right. You can do medicine at Manchester. Uh, is not my dad. Is my boyfriend. Oh. Sorry. So this is where you do your Christmas shopping, is it? No wonder you didn't want me to come. Hello. It's a nice surprise. You know, when I asked you to text Anita, I didn't realise I was dealing with a total amateur. Excuse me? Didn't you realise there were certain procedures you had to follow? Yeah, well, so what's the problem? She's gone, isn't she? Yeah, straight to my office. You really put me on the spot, Dev. Why don't you come see you? For advice. Professional advice. And very good advice it was, too. Apparently, I can sue you for unfair dismissal. You what? Yep. What was it all again? Loss of contractual rights, loss of ability to earn more redundancy pay. Should amount to a few hundred. And I can do a number on your family. Hey, and if you refuse to give me my job back, I can get double. Good, isn't it? 
Well, I mean, you gave it as advice, but I didn't have much choice, did I? So all in all, I think it would be easier if you just turn in for work tomorrow, don't you? No wonder you didn't want us to come. It's bad enough you're lying without getting all pally pally with him. I didn't even know he was going to be here. Oh, a likely story. Hey, and as for you, don't think you can stop her going to university. He's not trying to stop her. Oh, that's right, take his side. But he isn't. I think maybe you should have this conversation somewhere else. Yeah, you're right, let's go. Why should I? I've got as much right to be here as you have. I've got even more right than him. Yeah, well, someone has to show an interest. Because you weren't. You are? You're trying to tell me that I'm neglecting my daughter? Oh, you're really good at this, aren't you? Making a scene in public. You deserve me to humiliate her or what? Just shut your mouth, Platt, or I'll shut it oh, for you. Oh, go on, make her day. Why don't you? This bloke supposed to be me mate. He molested me daughter under my own roof, and now he's lecturing Will me. You stop it! You ought to be on one of them registers. You're sick. You're the one that's sick. It's not him that is ruining my life, it's you. I hate you. Go on, why don't you just go? Oh, don't worry. I am. And you, you're coming with me. Who does he think he is, eh? Who? Who do you think? Martin Flaming Platt. Oh, give it a rest, will you, Tommy? Please, I am sick of you griping on about him and Katie. Can't you think about anything else? No. Tell you the truth, I can't. I wake up with it and it's on my mind. Last thing at night before I go to bed, it's there. I'm getting stuck into a car engine and it's there. It's like a massive great weight that I can't shift off my back. Well, he'll have to shift it because you're making life in this house a nightmare with your carrying on. Me? You're blaming me for what him and our Katie's done to this family? <laughs> Very tall now. Tommy, we've got to get on with it. It's happened. She's living with him. Yeah, which she wouldn't be if you hadn't driven her out of the house. So, yeah, I do blame you for that. But now it's about the rest of us. You, me and Craig. We've got to get on with the rest of our lives. So just let Katie get on with hers. Did I wake you up? No. Your little brother beat you to it. But I passed forward this morning said he felt like a sing-song. Oh, well, he's like that. He could do with one of them wheels, you know, that they put hamsters in, and he could burn off a bit of that surplus energy. Maybe give the rest of us a bit of peace. Come here, you! What's up, Uncle Les? Hey, what did he do? Oh, I was lying there in bed having a quiet discussion with your mother. I believe she'd get up to put the kettle on. And he comes bursting in and jumps on me with two feet! Are you OK? No, I'm suffering. Oh, where he jumps on me. Well, I'll tell you this. Women don't know what pain is. You want to watch where you're jumping. I'll give you a surprise. You did that all right. You want to be careful with your Uncle Les. I don't want him crippled. See ya. See you later. Well, another day's going to be much trade, so you can clear off if you want to take an extra hour for lunch. I suppose you'll knock off an hour off my wages if I do. No, I didn't actually have that in mind, no. Well, while we're talking about wages... We're not talking about wages. I am. I think I'm due a pay rise. <laughs> really? Definitely. And seeing as you were so quick to sack me the other day for no apparent reason... I think I'm entitled. Call it payment for hurt feelings. You know, you can whistle for your pay rise, babe. And if people were paid for hurt feelings, I figure you're the one that owes me. Except that I was out of order for telling you that you were fired. But you still got your job, but why you want it, I have no idea. Because since you took up with that con man boyfriend of yours, any relationship between you and me is hopeless. Well, if it is, babe, it's your fault. I don't agree. But whose fault it is, is not the issue. So the best thing you can do is find yourself a job somewhere else. You'll be happier, I'd certainly be a lot happier. But you want to hang on here? Suit yourself. But there will never be a pay rise. No, I am never going to forgive him for humiliating me like that. Well, I can kind of understand how he feels. Because he's going to come round eventually, and one day, you and him are going to kiss and make up. But until then... Well, he's still your dad, isn't he? Oh, no. He has done things I can't forget. And I won't forgive. As far as I'm concerned, me and him are finished. I'm never going to speak to him again. Do you know something? He sounded just like your father, then. These sandwiches will be enough for you. Yeah, plenty. Be something to eat when you get back. All right, mate. You're off to football. Yeah, see ya. Hey, hang on a minute. I'll come and watch. No way, Dad. I don't want showing up. I won't show you up. What are you talking about, show you up? Like you did with Kate the other night at school. I heard all about it. See ya. Hey, hang on a minute. What have you been saying to him? Me and nothing. 
Oh, come on, Tommy. You can't make a scene like that and it not get round. Look, her pervy boyfriend had no right to be there. And you were bang out of order even talking to him. Well, I suppose you knew we were going to be there. I suppose you and our Katie had it all fixed up between you. No, we had no idea... Oh, you were very cosy. I walked in and you and him were talking to the teacher about our Katie's schooling like you were best pals. And what would you have liked me to do, eh? Spit in his eye? Yes. What do you want? Uh, well, just a, a word about tomorrow's arrangement. You've not changed your mind, have you? Uh, no. You're not having second thoughts, are you? No. A deal's a deal. Unless, of course, that cheque bounces. It warns. We keep our promises. Well, you're clear about the venue and the time? Yes, of course I am. I might be a couple of minutes late, but that's a bride's privilege, isn't it? No, I'm going to be there. Right. Well, I, I think that just about covers everything. But, well, like we agreed, we keep this whole thing between ourselves. You don't need to worry about that. I'm hardly going to start bragging that I'm marrying you, am I? Now we'll go and get the bus, shall we? And you can sit by the window. Would you like that? I can't tell you, Hayley, how much I detest that woman. You don't need to. And the more I see her, the more I despise myself for having gone anywhere near her. We can put up with it. Who, who is that with Bethany? Oh, it's a, it's a granny. Her other granny, not Gail, obviously. Just keep thinking about your baby, Roy. Our baby. That's what's going to make this all worthwhile. I walked into that school, and the first thing I see is you chatting away to him and our Katie, all smiles. Because I keep family business in the family. That's why. Not like you, going ballistic, washing all our dirty linen in front of all and sundry. You still don't go being friendly with Platt, that's what I'm telling you. Look, I am not talking about Martin Platt, I just care about Katie. Oh, you're saying I don't care? No. Look, maybe you care too much. Can't, with you carrying on, you are driving it further and further away from us. Can't you see that? No! When Katie comes to her senses and admits that all she's done is wrong, then she'll be welcomed back into this family. But until then, you stay well away from her. How dare you tell me what to do? Who do you think you are giving me orders? I'm your husband. I'm Katie's dad, and I'm trying to do what's right for this family. There ain't no family no more. It's a one-man band. It's you. Look, I'm telling you, it's down to our Katie now. And as long as she's with Platt, we have not to do with her. To hell with you, Tommy. She's my daughter and she always will be and I've had just about as much as I can stand to be a banging on her telling me what I can and I can't do. Angela, come back here! Hiya, Steve. Hi, oh, all right. Glass of white wine, please, Kieran. No problem. And a uh, pint, is it? No, it's all. I've got to get off after this. No, stay. Stay and talk to me. Come, things to do. Which reminds me, can you do the night shift tomorrow night? Tomorrow night? Yeah, well, I won't have anything better to do. Right, we'll ring Eileen and let her know. I won't be there. Oh, taking a day off? Not for fun. Inconvenient, actually. I'll go and see me dad. Take it, you know, he's inside. Yeah, well, I did hear. Oh, well, he's desperate for me to go and see him. Apparently, he's more unhappy than usual. <laughs> kind of puts mine and your problems in perspective, eh? Maybe, then again, maybe not. Angie? Four two, four two, four two, four two, four two, four two. We won, and I scored a goal. Yeah? Great. We were all over him. Anyway, I'm starving. What's for tea? I don't know. Ram? Mam, what's for tea? Where is she? She went out. We had a bit of an argument. That's <laughs> all you ever do these days, innit? You and her. Argue. Ever since our Katie went. I'm sick of it. Are you? Bless your cheek. Look, why don't you go and get washed up? I'm going to go out for a bit. Have a look round, see if I can find your mother. Mum, I know something's happened. What is it? It's your dad. What has he done? Oh, he's not eight years, has he? No, no. I, I, I don't know what to do with him. But he's banging on about you day in and day out, and I just can't reason with him. I just can't go on like that. Hey, 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 come, come, come back. 
just had to get out of the house. I couldn't stand them going on and on. Well, come back to our place. We'll have a cup of tea or something. Yeah, come on, Mum. I mean, here they must be out. You can't wander the streets. We could have something to eat. Yeah, that's a good idea. Come on. Angela? What do you think you're doing? Leave her alone. How long's all this been going on behind me back, yeah? Come on, never mind him. You come with us. You're coming home with me right now. I'm telling you straight, there's no two ways about this. You're either with me or you're with them. Tommy, don't say that. She's our daughter. Can't you see what you're doing to her, Dad? I'm not talking to you. Make your own mind up. You go with these two. Me and you are finished. Can I come with you, love? Yeah, of course you can. Come on. We'll look after you. Got that catalogue. I'm parched. Oh, so, what are you up to today then? Anything interesting? Celsius, that's 36 Fahrenheit. Tomorrow, dry and sunny in the morning, but cloud will thicken in the afternoon. Top temperature 10 Celsius. Hey, you're not going out like that. We put some clothes on. Put some clothes on. I've been dressing down in it. Oh, can you passion? Morning. Morning. Hey, Mum. Sleep all right? Yeah, yeah, fine. Thanks. There's a uh, tea in the pot. Um, can I get you some toast? No, no, you don't have to do that. It's no trouble. No, no, you're our guest. Can I get you anything else? No, thanks. <laughs> you're not going to school? Yeah, I have plenty of time. Don't nag me, eh? You want some toast? Uh, no, sir. Should eat something, love. Um, I've just said... Oh, all right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If you want to eat, can I eat? Don't know what say. Oh, I'll have a slice, then, with the uh, chocolate spread. Oh, for well, yeah. So, are you going to work? Cos you don't have to. Could I always take the day off? Hey, well, don't stop turning just cos my husband's acting daft. Yeah, well, it's more than daft. It's deranged. You're not going back there. Hiya. Oh, hello. I don't see the flowers. Yeah, yes, if you like. Um, you look very nice. Oh, thank you. Oh, very, very nice. <laughs> I'll uh, put them in the fridge for later. You're not going to wear that tie, though, are you? Why, well, there's something wrong with it. Well, it's black. You look like you're going to a funeral. Well, oh, I just feel a bit like it. Hey, well, look on the bright side, eh? Sooner you're married, sooner you can get divorced. <laughs> yeah, but that's not true, though, is it? I can't get divorced until after the baby's born. Yeah, I know. I was just trying to be positive. I've had a horrible thought. Well, We're only going through with this sham marriage so that we can get legal rights over the baby. Yeah. Well, we haven't thought about Tracy's rights. What rights? Her rights to half my worldly goods when we get divorced. Half the business, half my savings, half of everything. But you'll only be married a few months. I don't think that'll make any difference. We can't argue for parental rights if she can't have a fair divorce settlement. The, the law works both ways, unfortunately. This is getting ridiculous. We're going to end up paying for a wedding, a divorce and a baby. Unless... Unless what? I transfer all my assets into your name. We need to speak to that solicitor again. I'm sure I've still got a number. Have we got time? Uh, well, the wedding's not till quarter past five. I tell you what, you get that off. It could do with the press and I'll phone Miss Sharma. See if she can fit us in today. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Want a cup of tea? It's after 11. What you let me sleep in for? What are you doing here? You should be at school. I'm worried about you. Yeah, well, don't. I'm all right. Just worry about yourself. Look after number one. 
Everybody else seems to. You see my boots? No, maybe they're upstairs. Oh, get out of here. What are you playing at? It's got 11 o'clock. Sorry, Kev, I don't know what happened. One minute I'm on the settee watching Rambo 3, next minute I've woke up and half the morning's gone. So maybe it's skill? Uh, yeah, yeah, look, I'm just sorting him out, all right? Look, we've got cars piling up over there. I don't pay yet to keep on the settee. I know, I'm sorry. Look, just give me five minutes, let myself get sorted out and I'll be over here fresh as a daisy. Five minutes? You better go and get your uniform on and I'll write you a letter explaining why you were late. Is Mum coming back? Of course she's coming back. Why shouldn't she come back? I'm already working tonight. Yeah, I know, but Les is off sick. You know, I've got to go and see my dad later on. Without the bare bone here, we need someone out there. I've got stuff to do this afternoon. What can't you do between pickups? Well, I'm desperate and begging you here. How desperate? Well, I'll tell you what, if you do the afternoon and evening shift, I'll bung you an extra 30 quid. Mmm, tempting. Could be quite a lucrative day for me. But we need a cab out there. OK, I'll do it. But I've got something to do about 5.15, probably take about half an hour. Brilliant, I'll tell Irene. You're a lifesaver, you know that? Yeah, well, don't you forget that. I thought it was bad luck to see the bride on the day of the wedding. What's that, Steve? My tongue? You're not working today. Well, apparently he's desperate. And you know me, I'm always willing to help out when someone's in need. We have an arrangement for you to be at the register office at quarter past five. Yeah, I know, and I'll be there. Just as I'll be at the bank tomorrow morning cashing your lovely cheque. I'll be sorted out a witness. Oh, I've told you I'll do it when we get there. Oh, please wear something suitable. Like what? I'm sure you've something appropriate in your wardrobe. Uh, if I knew I had to sort out a wedding outfit, maybe we should have discussed a clothing allowance. If you let us down today, then our lovely cheque will bounce like a rubber ball. Now, we might know that this marriage is a mockery, but it doesn't have to look like one. Yeah, and if you talk to me like that, I might just change my mind. I didn't want to do any of this. Five grand for the happiest day of my life is starting to sound far too cheap. Do you think I was too hard? I don't know. I hope not. I suppose we'll find out at the registry office. Have you heard from my mum? No. Oh, it's it's alright, innit, if she stays a bit longer. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course it is. Well, I'll just want it all sorted, that's all. Yeah, well, it'd be better if you just up sticks and went back to Sheffield. Left us all on his own. Er, uh, us? Yeah, me, me, ma'am. And Craig. He's a bully. Probably better off without him. No, hang on a minute. Talking like your dad here. Don't you dare stick up for him. If he can't get his own way, then he don't want anyone else to be happy. <laughs> yeah, look. All right, he was angry and upset last night, but maybe your mum's right. Maybe he's calmed down today. Mm. Tracy. What? Where are you going? Work. You're a bit dressed up, aren't you, for driving a taxi? Oh, don't start, Mum. I'm not in the mood. Listen, what do you want for your tea? I was thinking of making a shepherd's pie. No, don't worry. I'm doing a double shift. Anyway, you know I don't like shepherd's pie. Oh, well, your dad likes it. Right, well, then make it for my dad. Well, there's no point, is there, just for two people? Now we'll have something on toast. Can I go now? Yes. And listen, you be careful working all these shifts. Just make sure you don't overdo it. Yeah, well, I don't do it for love, do I? I do it for the money. Look, I'll see you later. <laughs> Two visits in one day, I'm honoured. What happened to the conference? Finished early. Mm. I didn't expect it back at the office, but there's nothing that can't wait. Mm. And to be honest, I'm not in the mood. Oh, I'm glad you don't work for me. I'm not can cover for me. Besides, you know what they say about all work and no play. Mm. Makes you rich? Makes you dull. <laughs> Am I dull? I don't know yet, but it would be very dull to spend the whole day working when you could be taking me out. I'm terribly sorry. Miss Sharma should have been back by now. We don't know where she is. I, I don't know if you want to reschedule. Well, we were hoping to get this sorted out today. We made an appointment. Yes. Yes, you did, and we've let you down. Maybe I could help? Uh, yeah, well, I want to transfer my assets into the name of my, uh, my business partner. That shouldn't be a problem. The business involved is a cafe. That's right. And you brought a copy of the lease? We, we, we've got all the paperwork, yes. I'll need to have a document drawn up incorporating the lease and the transfer of goodwill. It'll take about an hour. Oh, fine, y yes, uh, fine. Are 
Are you coming for that drink? I don't know. Would you like me to stand in the street with you until you make up your mind? Hey, Angela! Message from Trummer. He's waiting for his tea on the table as soon as you're ready. Oh, is he? Yeah, and tell him, try not to be late tomorrow, eh? Right. I'm coming for that drink. Come on. Best let it breathe. Yes. <clears throat> it's very thoughtful of you, arranging the flowers. Still plenty of time. I know, I'm not worried. She'll be here. Okay, excuse me. You're not the only people getting married, you know. At last, we're beginning to worry. Uh, good, very suitable. I've got you this. How do I look? You look fine. I, I need to visit the. Not me. Sorry. So, what do you mean about them being an odd couple? If I can have the bride and groom over here, please, uh, the witnesses can sit down. Make a lovely couple, don't they? <laughs> I mean, the one person I wouldn't expect to see here be their grill and wife. I wanted me here. Just gets weirder by the minute. I'd like to welcome you all to Weatherfield Register Office for this, the wedding of Roy and Tracy. Marriage should not be entered into lightly or without due thought, but with respect and with the intention of sharing in each other's happiness. Roy and Tracy now intend to enter into such a marriage and if any person knows of any lawful impediment why they should not be joined in matrimony you should declare it now <coughs> sorry a bit emotional <coughs> I'd now like you both to repeat the following words starting with Roy I do solemnly declare I do solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful impediment that I know not of any lawful impediment why I, and you say your full name. Why I, Royston Crop. May not be joined in matrimony to Tracy Lynette Barlow. May not be joined in matrimony to Tracy Lynette Barlow. And now, Tracy, please. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare. I give you this ring as a symbol of my commitment to our marriage. I give you this ring as a symbol of my commitment to our marriage. I promise to love, cherish, honour and respect you. I promise to love, cherish, honour and respect you. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. In joy and in sorrow. Sorry. Take your time. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. Sickness and in health. For as long as we both shall live. For as long as we both shall live. And now, Tracy, I give you this ring as a symbol of my commitment to our marriage. I give you this ring as a symbol of my commitment to this marriage. I promise to love, cherish, honour and respect you. I promise to love, cherish, honour and respect you. From this day, from forward, this day forward, for better, for, for, better worse, for worse, in joy, in joy and, and in sorrow, sorrow in, sickness in sickness and, and in health, health for, for as long, long as we, we both, both shall live. live. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You make it the bride. Hey! Three cheers for Royston and Tracy. Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! It was quite moving when he broke down. Mm, I still think he must be loaded. Mm. Cheering like that, that was embarrassing. I was only entered into the spirit of the occasion. It was a wedding after all. Admittedly, the freakiest wedding I've ever been to. And you? I know we had 
to make it look authentic, but did you have to start blubbering? I found the whole experience very traumatic. Get over yourself, Roy. I still think we've done the right thing. Do you? Now what? I think we should go and find Keir. Not where do we go? How do we live with what we've done? I just married someone else, someone not you. We went through this. It's for a short time and then you get divorced. Roy, I know it's hard, but you're going to have to pull yourself together. Yeah. You're right. I'm seeing some crazy things in me time. <laughs> that one has to take the biscuit. Does it run in the family? What? You and Peter, <laughs> your secret weird wedding. Yeah, well, let's just make sure it stays secret. <laughs> Come to think of it, he involved the baby as well. Is that all part of the crack? It's not funny. <laughs> Come on. You could have sold tickets for that performance. Standing room only. Yeah. Well, it doesn't mean I was enjoying it. Look, I know that everyone thinks I'm a bitch. You have been uh, played a few nasty tricks, haven't you? Look, I don't intend to hurt anybody. It just always seems to end up like that. Come on, it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't see inside me head. Look, we all have nasty stuff on our side of our heads, right? You're not the only one. So how do we stop messing up? If I knew that, I'd be a rich man. Keep your hair on! Some guy wants the space. Well, tell him to get stuffed! <laughs> That's more like it. So you're going to see her? Tonight. Well, I've got to put his mind at rest, haven't I? Well, what is she seeing this bloke? Well, that's not going to put his mind at rest, is it? Well, I have to tell him something. Right, give me ten minutes. I'll be with you. What? Well, you're not going to be with her all night, are you? And I haven't been to Blackpool for ages. Night out. Well, hang, 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 hang on a minute. You want to come? Well, yeah, why not? Well, you don't like her. I'm not going to see her. You drop me off somewhere and I'll meet you later. Uh, no, I can't do that. Why? Because it might be a tricky conversation, that's why. I can't just say, right, I'll see you now, because I'm going to come and meet you. Why not? Because it's not right, Karen. And she'll probably want to know why you haven't come to see her. She'll be glad. She don't like me any more than I like her. <sighs> oh, oh, I see. So you can have a night out in Blackpool, but I can't. Is that it? Karen, I don't want to go to flaming Blackpool in the first place. He'll be back. That's not what he said. But people say all sorts when they're riled. I came back, didn't I? You came and he went. What's the good of that? Look, he'll have a few in the Rovers. He'll calm down and he'll be home. And tell me who's off on your holidays. You've not walked out. I'm satisfied now. Hey, Platt, I'm talking to you. Cool it, Tommy. Don't pretend you can't hear me. I've got nothing to say. OK? No. You said it all to my wife last night, though, didn't you? Well, she came because of Katie, not because of me. Oh, I'll bet you were glad, don't you? Oh, would you rather? Kicked her out into the street? I bet you were up all night. Telling her it was my fault, not yours. Well, I'll tell you what, you've brought my family up for good and proper now, haven't you? Tommy, I won't have this in here. It's OK, Bev. I'm off. It's going to do you no good, you know. So, where are you going to go now? I don't have a clue. Put you up at ours, mate, but we're a bit short of space. Ah, cheers, mate. That's the least of my problems. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't know. So, what are you having? I'll have a pint if you're buying. And a white wine, please, Beth. Thought it were your night off. I can't get enough of the place. Do you think I'll be back? Don't know. This is all new territory to me, love. I've got to believe that he will. I don't see why. I think you're better off without him. You don't give up on marriage that easy. Yeah, but there's a limit, isn't there? I mean, how long has this been going on, him being a pig? Compared to how long I've known him, not long. Seems like forever to me. And what would you know about forever? I've known him longer than you've lived. And when you've been with Martin that long, through thick and thin, not just a few weeks on him, and then he can talk to me about forever. It's going to take more than this to break us up. You did not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Royston, you've caught me red-handed. Shutting up your wife. Wait, your voice down, please. Ah, you know what we haven't had yet? A toast to the happy couple. 
All right, that's enough. How about a bottle of champagne? That's how you two lovebirds got together in the first place. You can stop this right now. And then there's the best man's speech. Would you like me to say a few words? Well, I believe the groom speaks first, so if I may. <laughs> Go ahead. Haley and I are used to other people's ridicule. It's one of the many things that binds us together. And we would be the first to acknowledge the absurd side to today's event. So your, your jokes are predictable as well as feeble. <laughs> There's no need to be so serious, Roy. Excuse me, but I think there is. The point of today's ceremony was to ensure the future happiness of my son or daughter. Were your jokes to receive a wider audience, that happiness could be in jeopardy. Mock us all you want to when we're on our own, but please, for the sake of my unborn child, keep our secret safe. Yeah, and I agree with him. Well, if it's what Mrs. Cropper wants, that's fine by me. Hey, girl, thank you. Florence, just please, love, when you're ready. Steve. <gasps> what are you doing? Come here. Oh. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Good. Are you? I am not bad. How's Karen? She's well. She sends a love. <laughs> I can't believe this. I'll get you that drink. So, is this just by chance or? Uh... No. Uh, my dad's asked me to come and see you. Really? Yeah. He's worried about you. Why? You missed a visit the other week. Yeah, but I explained that to him on the phone. I had flu, I could hardly get out of bed. Yeah, he said. What, don't you believe me? Mum, um... He reckons there's something going on between you and the guy that runs this place. Oh, where's he got that from? One of his mates is seeing you together, apparently. Really? Where? In bed? He doesn't know how far it's gone. Look, I'm just passing on what he said. Steve, three years I've been following your dad around this country. Finding new jobs, new places to live, just to be near him. Then I miss one flaming visit. Is that why he called you in, to tell you that? All right, look, he sends me some going on. Well, that's good. I'll tell him. All right, sweetheart. Laurie, it's your night off, isn't it? Well, I thought I'd come and keep you company. Hi. I think that's everything. Do you want me to come out your carrier? Oh, no, I'll manage. Of course, you know what would solve this problem, don't you? Because I, I can't go on giving you money all the time. Uh, oh, would, would... we don't expect you to. No, but, I mean, one way around it might be if, if you all moved in with me. I, I know it's not ideal and you'd rather have a place of your own, but until you find your feet in life, it, it might be an idea. Anyway. Think about it. We can talk later. Why is she on? So my dad was right. This isn't how it looks. Well, that's me thinking he'd finally lost it. Believe me. You were telling me to pack a lies because you didn't expect him to come in tonight. I said what I did because there's nothing going on. Well, that's not true, is it? Clearly. Do you like wine, Steve? And do a drink it with. Do I get one? I think they need you behind the bar, actually, Liz. I think us three need to talk, don't we? Just give us five minutes. You're good, Elf. What's going on? Your mother's a lovely lady. Yeah, her husband thinks so, no? Her husband's serving eight years for murder. Manslaughter. They'll be out for parole in one. But even if he does get out, How's he going to pick up the pieces and give her the life she deserves? I'm going to do with you. And if you've any sense, she'll keep it that way. He's not a man with whom to mess. She's worth more than this. Slipping round the country while they're shifting from pillar to post. Yeah, it's called devotion, mate. It's been wearing thin of late, whatever it is. Yeah. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Look, I know this can't be easy for you, but Liz has got to move on. I said, what does that mean? I'm giving her the love and attention she deserves, that's all. And I'd say she's thriving on it. What do you mean, love and attention? You're a married man, Steve. I'm sure I don't have to spell it out for you. If you've laid one finger on her... Hey, you two, do you think I need 
need this? Sorry, Liz. Last thing I want is to spoil things. Sorry for upset you, Steve. No hard feelings, eh? I'll leave you to it for now. So come on. Truth. We could go now, Kieran and Tracy have gone. I'm just worried he might come back and start shooting his mouth off. What more can we do, though? We'd have to follow him 24 hours a day to be sure he kept quiet. Even then, he could still blurt it out. Just for tonight, it'll make me feel better. Where have you been all day? Oh, hiya, Janice. Skyving again, eh? It's all right for some, isn't it? What's all this? Oh, I had a day off, Mr Baldwin. Uh, here, did you know about this? About what? Her taking time off when we got that order to get out. Uh, yeah, no, she booked it ages ago. I went through the proper channels. It was before that order came in. Oh, right, well, uh, I suppose that's all right then. Come on, Mike, they've got rights. When I want a lecture on the Factories Act, I'll ask, all right? Question is, though, what are you doing all dressed up like that? You've not been for a job interview, have you? Well, I hope not. Christine, uh, a cousin of mine's had a baby. Oh, that's nice. Boy or a girl? Boy. I thought you didn't keep in touch with any of your family. There was nobody at wedding. I don't see them much, no. I'm sorry if I've put you out, Mr Baldwin. I'll, I'll do extra tomorrow if you like. No, that's all right. Just uh, uh, don't make a habit of it, all right? I think we're tempting Providence sitting here. What if Janice comes back and starts asking questions again? Maybe you're right. Come on, let's drink with her. Oh, hi, you two. Oh, hello. Can I get you a drink? Uh, no, thank you. We're just going. It's not a dad, ladies. No, um, we came to see you today. Oh, I was in a conference. Yeah, we gathered. We saw Mr Pomfrey instead. Did he sort you out? Yeah, he was fine. Anyway, see you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I was talking to somebody about your case the other day and they were able to clarify something. Really? Mm. You know I said your best bet was to marry the mother of the child. Uh, th that's correct. Well, it's more complex. Why, does that not give me legal rights? No, oh, no, there's nothing wrong with it. But? Well, obviously it's a big step to take. It turns out the other way I mentioned is just as effective. The parental responsibility agreement. But, but you said that that wouldn't work. I said it wouldn't be as reliable, but uh, it is. What? Provided you get the mother's signature, it's more or less a formality. Even without the signature, it's doable. A bit trickier, but... Um... So, so what you're saying is that I don't have to marry Tracy to assure my rights as a parent over that child? That's right. Sorry I didn't get my head around it before, but uh, better late than never, eh? Kevin? Kev? <sighs> Tommy didn't stop the night with you, did he? Nope, sorry. Have you got any idea where he is? No, should I say I don't open up, will you? It's just that Craig's been fretting about him all night. Hey, Kev. Sorry, what are you doing there? Have you been here all night? I had nowhere else to go. You've got home to go to. Look at you, you're in a right state. You should have come home. I'll come home when you see sense about our Katie. If she's part of your life, then I'm not. What about Craig, eh? Is he not in your life either? You're pathetic, Tommy. You're stubborn, pig-headed, pathetic and stupid. Oh, dear. Shut it, turn on. You heard what Miss Sharma said. Yeah, well, she might have been wrong. Well, she was wrong. She said she was wrong. I mean, she might have been wrong when she thought that she was wrong. I didn't have to marry Tracy. We don't know that, not for certain. Look, we've got an appointment to see this other solicitor. There's no point in getting worked up until we know for sure. I'm going to be late. Kevin, are you coming? Uh, no. Just tell Bob and I'll be late. You know, Mum, please. Mm. Well, no, actually. You won't know, will you? <laughs> I know that you had them last week and the week before that. We need to think up some new excuses, Kevin. Look, all I'm saying is, what can you expect? She's hardly the type to sit at home down in socks and making jam, is she? So she was just the type, actually. Who? Hey. Ailey. Keep up, Steve. Talk about your mother. Oh, sorry, did you come with operating instructions? Because if you did, I haven't read them. Look, all I'm saying is, if your dad's in prison for years and years, then it's no wonder because they're getting tucked from time to time. Uh, that 
Is my mother you're talking about there? Yes, I know. And she's a slapper and he needs telling. I mean, he knows that she's messing around with that fella in... Laurie? Yeah, so it's not as if you're telling him something he doesn't already know, is it? <clears throat> Still gonna hurt him, though, isn't it? It's gonna hurt him a lot more if you tell him nothing's going on and then he comes out of prison and she's shacked up with this fella, tropical fish tank and matching bedside cabinets. Would you, uh, would you wait for me if I went inside? Get real, Steve. I don't see why I can't come with you. It's a Newton and Ridley party. Have you ever been one of the licensees? No. Well, I have, which is why I've been invited and why I'm going. Well, how do I know you're really going to this party? You might be going to meet your Steve or visit Jim. If I was, I'd tell you. Laurie, I've warned you, I don't like possessive men. Here's the invite. See for yourself. I'm sorry, I'm just... Did he say anything about me? You're Steve? No, why should he? Well, I would, if I found out my mother had a new boyfriend. You're not my boyfriend. So, um, what does Gran know about Wally? Just that we found out that he was married and he's not a millionaire. So she doesn't know about me and him, then? Oh, listen, Tracy, love, she nearly had a heart attack when I told her that Peter was a bigamist. <laughs> if she finds out that her, her boyfriend was cheating on her with her own granddaughter, it's liable to finish her off completely. I mean, I know I call her, but I don't want to see her in a box just yet. You know, in a funny sort of way, I've missed her. Yeah, so have I. But don't you dare tell her I said that. <gasps> So when do you think I should tell her about the baby? Oh, wait till after lunch. Let her settle a bit. Ah, oh, here they are. Hello, I'm back. Oh, hello. <laughs> no. Where's Ken? Did you, he dropped me off. Said he had to go into town. Oh, it's good to have you back. <laughs> Welcome home, Gran. <laughs> well, there's no need to ask what you've been up to. Who's the father? What? Laurie, I've told you I don't want to talk about it. I've said all I'm saying. Just leave it, will you? Big hair, short skirt, and fella trouble. Could only be Liz MacDonald. Bet! The one and only. <laughs> Doing? Like I've just spoke to me dad. Ah, oh, right. And uh, what did you say? I said my mum was playing away. Ouch. Well, at last I heard you were in Brighton. Well, I still am in Brighton. I've got an interest in a little place down there. Small, but select. <laughs> How about you? Last I heard you got back with Jim when he went in. That's right, yeah. And we're both still behind bars. Only he gets lights out at ten, I chuck out at half eleven. I'm working here now in Blackpool. Jim was transferred to an open prison a few months back, so I got a job close by and I visit him whenever I get the chance. Can't be easy. Whenever was life easy. So, who was the fella? Oh. Long story. Best told over a couple of gins in that case. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be a brewery do. I reckon there should be a bar or two about the place. Hey, I only came to get out of the pub. I am so glad you're here. A friendly face. I don't see many of them these days. Mmm, talking of unfriendly faces. Is that Fred Elliot over there? Oh, yeah. Find that. <laughs> Quick, before he spots us. Oh, <laughs> ladies, look who it is. Fred! Hi. Fancy seeing you here. What a surprise. I were invited by Cecil Newton. We go way back. <sighs> Just look at you, Perk. Easy, Tiger. <laughs> you two ladies. <laughs> Beautiful blooms, oh, yes. I am glad to see you two. Oh, we're beginning to think it was just a lot of fat old fellas in suits. Well, Liz and I were just seeking out the nearest watering hole. Well, then, if you'll let me accompany you, under my patronage, you will not have to get your purses out. Well, actually, Fred, I think you'll find the brewery's paying for all drinks. Oh, is it? Oh, never mind that. Shall we? I never thought I'd be surprised at out you got up to. But this, I wouldn't have thought Roy Cropper were capable. Mind you, they say it's the quiet ones you have to watch. 
You'll not remember your Uncle Roland. Well, I say uncle. He were only married to your Auntie Beryl from Lent till Easter. Ran off with the barmaid from the Toad and Ferret and we all thought he were temperance. Sort of fella you never even noticed when he walked into a room. Just like Roy Cropper. He collected butterflies, I think. Mm. Or were it stamps? Why, Tracy, you could have had any fella you wanted. Why Roy Cropper? It was a bet. A bet? How much did you win? A penny. A penny? I wouldn't have done it for a million pounds. A penny? And a baby? Yeah, well, I didn't mean to get pregnant. Show me a woman who does. Oh, don't mind me. I always knew I wasn't planned. And that's another question I want answered. What? Why are you keeping it? I'd have thought you'd have wanted to get rid quick as you could. Well, guilt. I don't know. Anyway, I've talked it through with Roy and Hayley and they're going to bring it up. They're what? It's all sorted. And you're happy about this? No, but it's not up to me, is it? It's Tracy's child. And your grandchild and my great-grandchild. Oh, no. I'm not having this baby brought up by two men, even if one of them does wear a frock. Mother! Don't you mother me. It's a good job I'm back. What with Peter dashing about, marrying women and having secret babies, and Tracy landing herself in trouble. Honestly, Deirdre, have you no control over your family? What do you say we ditch Fred? Find a quiet corner, I'll get us a couple of large gins and we'll save on the tonics by scracking in them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put a damper on the party. Hey, this is your Auntie Bet. I know you, lady, and I care. Come on. Elizabeth Theresa Lynch, as I live and breathe. Cecil, are you still living and breathing? I wasn't five minutes ago when my boring son was droning on. But the sight of you has put new life in my old bones. Uh, who's this lovely young lady? Liz MacDonald. Liz, this is Cecil Newton. How do you do? Widower, chairman of the board, 3.6 million in the bank, 70 years young and all my teeth are me home. Oh. <laughs> hey, you're Craig's over there. All right, mate. Good day at school. Are you coming home? I can't. Yes, you can. I can't. You don't understand. Yes, I do. Come on tonight. I'll stay out the way, please. You can talk to Mum on your own. Look, I'm sorry. No, you're not. Because if you were sorry, you'd come back. I hate this. You not at home. Kate live with Martin. And you and Mum rowing all the time. You say you're sorry. But if you were, you'd stop it. You'd all stop it. Craig! What we said to him? No. Freud, Hayley, I've been hearing all sorts about you. All sorts? About your plans concerning my great-grandchild. Roy's baby. And not yet it's not. It's inside Tracy, so it's still hers as far as I'm concerned. And if I'd been here when all this nonsense started, I'd have made sure she'd have done away with it by now. Done away with it? That's a terrible thing to say. Tracy's not fit to be a mother. And you two can kid yourselves all you like, but you're weird by anybody's standards. He looks like he should be crayon in something. And you, you can call yourself what you like. But I'm not letting any fella who wears women's underwear anywhere near my flesh and blood. You may think you've conned me granddaughter into handing over her baby, but you'll get that baby over my dead body. Now we know where Tracy gets it from. Oh, you can't beat it, can you? I'd have thought you'd have had enough sea air in Brighton. No, it's not like this in Brighton. No, you can't beat Blackpool. Candy floss, cockles, beer and donkeys. I close my eyes and I'm a little girl again. Running across the beach, dodging waves and eating butties full of sand. <laughs> hey, I used to see this lad from here. 
Oh, Trevor something. And he once threatened to throw himself off tower if I wouldn't marry him. <laughs> what did you do? I told him, jump. jump. I can't be doing with emotional blackmail. Besides, Trevor was just a bit too reliable. Mm. Only exciting thing he ever did was threaten to jump. I think he got a job selling insurance. <laughs> I don't do so. You see, I like not knowing where I stand. It keeps me on my toes, keeps me young. But don't you get tired of it all, though? Don't there come a time when you'd want to just relax and kick off your shoes and give in to it all? I relax enough when I'm six feet under. I'm like this place. When the dark nights start drawing in and the illuminations sparkle. Just like me. <laughs> Back early? Yeah, I've not been working. I wish I hadn't. Baldwin's been on my back all day. Who's this? Karen, this is my dad. Jim. What about you, Karen? But you're in prison. No, he's not. He's escaped. Is it? Oh, no, I saw you had the police round. Oh, no. Uh, um, someone we had in the cab earlier. The police were interested in. Well, I'm relieved to hear it. See you. See you now. Let's go. Oh, no, 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 no. Look, I'm not a suitcase. I'm a human being. Dad! Get in there! No, I'm not travelling like that. I'll lie down flat in the back of the cab, nobody would be any the wiser. Hey. Huh? I've just thought. You didn't mind me asking, did you? No! I didn't want you to think I was just being nosy. Morning, love. Morning, Rita. Anyway, I'll leave you to get on. Great. Trip to Blackpool, escape convict in the back. You don't have to come. Oh, yes, I do. Only me. Well, we don't normally see you this early. Or have you just come to check whether I've had anybody stop in the night? If you mean that bet woman, then I would hope you've more sense. I have. I've asked her to marry me, and then she can stop here for good. D Dad, please, don't even joke about it. Who's joking? I'm perfectly serious, and so is she. We have to be at our age. I've asked her to marry me, and she's considering the idea. If that's true... It is. Then you must have gone stark staring mad. Dad, I mean it. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Oh, so no congratulations, then. That woman's a cheap tart, out for everything she can get. That woman, as you refer to her, is about to be your stepmother. So a little bit of respect will be welcome. But, but, but come on, I mean, it's the one thing you've only just met her. I've known Bet for years. I've had my eye on her for years. It's just the opportunity never presented itself. But it has now, and I'm taking it. Yeah, like she intends to take you for every last penny. No. Bet's not after my money. She's after the same thing as me. Companionship. Happiness. You'll make a laughing stock out of the both of us. Well, you're not. I'm going to put a stop to it. Oh, how are you? Right, it's where she is. Looks like a right dime. What do you think we should do now, then? Well, I think you two should stay here and I'll go and see how it is. We're all going to end up in jail, aren't we? Oh, will you calm down? Well, we are. Look, I'm sorry about all this, lovey, but as soon as I've seen Liz, then, well, there's really no need for you and Steve to be involved anymore. So there's not. He's watching you like a hawk, watching something it fancies for his dinner. As long as he's only watching, we don't mind that, do we? Hi, Mum. Hi, darling. Hello? No, no, it's me. I'm surprised every time I look in the mirror. What's happened? My oh, dad's in the car outside. No. He's run away from prison. I oh, know. We've had the police here. What does he think he's playing at? Um, I wants to talk to you. Well, I can't 
come out now, can I? And you can't bring him in here. I told you we've had the police here already. Here, Brad Elliott's caravan. The one I was supposed to be stopping in? No. Well, yeah, I suppose. Where is it? Regent Caravan Park. Hang on. Laurie? What can I do you for? Regent Caravan Park, where is it? South Shore. Turn left before Pleasure Beach, then off to your right. Are we going to have us a little holiday? Well, I've got no clothes for me, neither's he. Then take my car and nip home and get some. It's only an hour away. Well, I might need a few bits and pieces too. Then go with him. Then get yourselves back to a caravan and I will have a lovely dinner waiting. But come on, chop chop! Quiet round here, son? Yeah, well, wrong time of year for caravans, fortunately. Listen, here's your key. Good luck. Yeah. You make sure your mummy comes to see me, all right? Yeah, yeah, she said she will. Now listen, get in. Tell that wee girl of yours I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Stephen, look, I really appreciate all you're doing for me, honest to God. Look, Dad, will you just get in and shut the door? Okay. Going home? Yeah, yeah. Look, we're just gonna go and see me mum first, eh? No, what for? I won't do that. Look, either get in or I'll leave you here. That's all I can tell you. Except that you'll definitely know her when you see her. She's blonde and busty and cheap as they come. There's a few of them in Blackpool. Not like this one. And I want her followed night and day, yes? She will be. But I want pictures. Because no use me just telling him what she's been getting up to. I want photographs I can wave in front of his nose. We can do that. I think I took you. By surprise a bit, didn't I, proposing like that? Well, it wasn't what I was expecting, no. But then life's full of surprises, isn't it? Only... If you've uh, slept on it and want to change your mind, I should quite understand. Does that mean you'd like me to say that? No. No, not the very least. Only I don't want you to feel trapped into something that was said on the spur of the moment and you haven't had a chance to think about it. Well, it's not like we're planning on getting married today, is it? No, not today. Well, then. Tomorrow. Oh. Oh. Okay. Just tell me, please, why have you done this? When all it's going to be. I did it because I had to see you first. You uh, see me, I was. I see you once a month, once a month. I couldn't wait for the next special. Mm. Mm. Oh. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, look. You. You. You and this man who runs the pub. Laurie. Laurie, 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 Laurie. You tell me there's nothing going on between you and Yuri. Tell me, please, I want the truth. Whatever it is, it's doing my head in. The truth is, there is nothing going on. That is the honest to God's truth, whether you believe it or not. Well, that's not what I have heard. Who oh, from? Never you mind who from. Oh, but whoever it is, you'll believe them sooner than you'll believe me. Elizabeth, don't you think I want to believe you? What the hell do you think I'm doing this godforsaken place? Then listen to me. There is nothing going on between me and Laurie. Oh, yeah, he'd like it if there were. He'd <sighs> like nothing better. All right, somebody you know has seen him put his arm round me at the back of the bar. I'm not denying that might have happened, but that's as far as it gets and as far as it's ever going to get. Because I've been waiting three long years for you. <laughs> Hello, Beth. Oh, hello. Oh, no, you're back in Brighton, me now. Could you not uh, tear yourself away? <laughs> Can't seem to, no. Well, no, they've not got a tower, have they? And there appears aren't a patch on Blair Pools. Hey, that means you're not using caravan, though. No, no, I'm stopping with Liz, like I said. Well, it's all turned out for best only. Our Ashley and his family have turned off. And one thing's led to another. And so we'll all be staying there, having a little holiday. Stopping in caravan? Oh, yes. Look, there's bugs in a the rug. They're not there now, though, are they? No, they've had to nip home, but they'll not be long. Be nice to take my grandson for a walk on Sands before it gets dark. So you're going to tell him? I will when I get the right moment, yeah. And you'll be back tonight? 
Yeah, but it'll be late. I don't really mind, as long as I know you're coming. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter who I am. You're looking for a prisoner on the run, name of Jim MacDonald. Well, I can tell you where he is. <laughs> well, well, well. You've got to get out of here now. Come on. Why? What's going on? It's what's going to go on. Fred Elliott and, I don't know, hundreds of others are going to be moving in here any minute. I thought you said Steve. I know what I told Stephen. I was wrong. Come on. All right, all right. And your horses. And don't worry, I thought of somewhere else for you. Hey? You like being on a boat? Do you know, strangely enough, Bet, I haven't been sailing for quite a while. Uh, Cecil Newton, who's my sort of fiancé in way. Fiancé, ask! He's got one more at Fleetwood. If I can only get you there. That sounds like it's come this way. Oh, hell, fire! Hey, I reckon someone's grasped me up, you know. Who would, though? Unless it was somebody who saw you when you come here. Oh! Right, keep moving! Oh. Hello? What's going on here? What do you think you're doing? And you are? I'm the chap who owns this caravan, that's who I am. What's your name? Elliot. Frederick Handel Elliot. Have I been robbed? Has somebody broken in? Have you had anybody staying here, sir? No. There should have been, but no, nobody. Looks like we might have had a false alarm. So nobody's broken in? They haven't, sir, no. Except for you. How did you get in? The site manager had a key. Oh. You didn't ring us by any chance, did you? Why should I do that? About an escaped convict? No, I didn't. I was going to sleep, but we could have got that. We'll wait at the next stop. Just hang on, hang on. Have half a black oh. Sands in here. Oh, it's worth saying. Hey, listen, Ben. What? I'm trying to ask you a question. Look, has Liz said on to you about your man, Laurie, and that boozer? Is that what all this is about? Oh, well, when I was inside, one of the lads said he'd heard that they'd been cozying up behind a bar together. You want locking up for your own good, you? Is that you saying there's nothing going on? Not going on as he'd like it to go on, no. Jim, you should know that. I know, but you know what I'm like, but I get some idea in my head and I can't get rid of the damn thing. Oh, no, it's the police. Come here on the other side. I'll do better than that. What? Give us a kiss. What? No. Come on. Now, I'll be gentle with you. Don't be scared. Bayek, you've learned a few tricks in that prison. So do I to stay in a hotel? This is a hotel. No, it's a boarding house. <coughs> yes, so it is. Sorry. You don't care about me. All you care about is your mum and your convict dad. <laughs> well, not tonight, because they can take a back seat because you're going to take me out. Right. Fine. And I don't mean back to that great little pub either. Sitting talking to your mum all night, I mean out. Look, we might just call in. No, baby, why? Because I want to see how she is after she's seen him. What do you mean, how she is? She's not going to be any different, is she? She's still going to be wanting you to wait around and foot. I want to know what they've decided. I want to know what's going to happen to him. That means I was involved in transporting him about again. Uh, well, you don't have to be. You can stay here. I'll go on my own. You know what I could do any time I wanted? Call phone the police, tell me where your dad is. Then it'll all be over. It'll be over between me and you. I'm not saying I would. No. Now, there should be a key here somewhere. So, this belongs to the man who wants to marry you, don't you? Well, he says he does. Well, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be hanging around, so wouldn't Hey? I'd be telling him tomorrow and soon enough. Yes, well, you would, you, because you're anybody's you. I found that out. Come on, get your stored away where you'll be safe. So what were they looking for? There, I don't know. They said, had I rung them about an escaped convict? What, like ordering a takeaway pizza? Uh, could we have one escaped convict with extra topping? <laughs> that might have been it, I didn't think. <laughs> so I went boarding house last night. Why? Just asking. Would it mean to end up there? No. 
We only went because the car broke down. We had no choice. And they only had one room, so we had no choice about that either. Oh, my God. Cecil, don't worry. I'll see you Uncle Neil when the gym's there. Well, you were expecting me to go see him tonight. I don't think he will be now. For one thing, they lock it up. I'm not sure you'd get him. He says he wants me to give my notice in here and move out, and he won't give himself up till I do. What did you say? Well, I said I will, but I need some time. Otherwise, I'll be putting myself out on the street. Oh, you don't want to do that. And now, Laurie is behaving in a very peculiar fashion. I thought you were doing that already. a bit of a squash. But well, once we get the car back, I reckon we'll be... Hey, look who it is. Steve. All right, Ash. Hi, son. What are you two doing here? Well, we've uh, just come for a couple of nights away, you know. Yeah, Steve's so got some family in. My mum, you mean? No, what's the name? Well, we've brought our Josh for a few days. I, I know it doesn't look like it, but my dad's babysitting him. So we can have a walk. Yeah, and it was his idea, not ours. Well, all of it's been his idea, really. Yeah. Right, see you then. <laughs> I hope we don't bump into anybody else while we're here. Because it weren't worth us coming. Well, I don't know what else to say. Well, say the same thing that you said before. Well, what was that? Ask me when I marry you. Well, I've already had my answer to that, haven't I? Not for me. Well, as good as. You said you didn't love me. Well, of course I don't. But what does that matter? Well, most folks think he does. Most folk are younger than us. Most folk haven't learned, whereas we have. I've lived with fellas I've been head over heels in love with. I've been as miserable as sin. I don't want any more of that, thank you. Well, what do you want? I want to be with somebody that I like. Somebody I can trust. And somebody I can be at ease with. I'll go along with that. Well, then say it. Will you? Will you marry me? I will. Yes. You will? Did you not think I would? <laughs> not after what was said before. No, I didn't. Well, I'm sorry if I've disappointed you. Oh, you haven't. You haven't. It's just that... And we are still talking tomorrow, I hope. Well, that's up to you. Well, if it's up to me, yes. I will marry you tomorrow. Well, <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> well, the police haven't caught up with your dad, if that's what you mean. That's what I came to tell you. I had a visit from two coppers at Cracker Dawn. I think they thought they might find Jim. Anyway, he seems to be safe where he is for the time being. Oh, well, good. <clears throat> no, I didn't think you'd be pleased. You want to see him back inside. Where is he now? Do you know, I think it's best I don't tell you. What do you mean? Well, we don't want the police getting another tip off, do we? Well, you and me don't. But she does. Oh, good, you got here on time. As soon as Fred gets here, we'll set off and get the bride. There's something you need to know. No brewery business today. Whatever it is, it can wait. This isn't brewery business and it can't wait. It's to do with your lady friend. What the hell's the matter with you? Can't you even call her by her name? It's Bet. And in an hour's time, she'll be my wife and your stepmother. How about a private detective following her? You've done what? What the hell? Oh, hang on. She's been making a fool of you behind your back. She's got a boyfriend. But don't take my word for it. See for yourself. I did warn you. I told you you couldn't trust her. Who's the man? That I don't know. I tried to tell you. I, mean, I could see what she was, but you wouldn't listen. No. I didn't want to. No, I had to tell you. I, mean, I couldn't let you marry a scheming old tart, could I? No. No, of course you couldn't. You've had a lucky escape, hmm? Right, well, uh, might as well get down to the office. Plenty one seeing to. Right. 
Well, I'll love you and leave you after you get settled to church on time. Have you remembered the wedding ring? Ye oh, my word. Oh. It's very late. He's not coming. Oh, now, give over. Maybe we've got the arrangements wrong. Maybe we're supposed to meet them at the church. No. He said him and Fred would pick us up here. He's not coming. Oh, come on. Something's gone a bit wrong, that's all. Maybe the car's broken down or something. He'd have phoned. Oof. I can't just wait here. I'll phone him. No. It's humiliating enough without going chasing him. Matt, I'm sure it can't be like that. I am. I don't know why, but I am. I think I always knew. It was just too good to last. Do you fancy that fish and chip cafe? Yeah, why not? At least we know they've got our chairs, so Josh will be all right. Excuse me, is this yours? Is this your baby's shoe? Yes. Yeah. Thanks, thanks very much. Thanks. The dear these days, aren't they? Look at his shoes. Little lad, is it? He's seen much of you, love. Just saying, you've got your mummy's looks, haven't you? Cecil, where have you been? We've been going frantic here. Bet is here. It's a bit awkward, is this? He weren't for coming. What's going on, Cecil? What's this all about? Found out about you. There's another man. Don't deny it. You've been seen with him. Another man? What do you mean? Your boyfriend. You'd have kept him on after we were married, no doubt. And I'd have been keeping him without even knowing it. There is no boyfriend, I swear it. Who's been telling you this? Don't you lie to me. What's this, then? It's not what you think. Oh, come on. Who is this man? I can't tell you that. But it's not how it looks. Uh, come on, Fred. I told you it was pointless. It's my husband. Liz, hang on. No. Bet won't tell you because she's trying to help me. His name's Jim MacDonald. He's escaped from prison. He's on the run from the police. My hell, it's Jim MacDonald, all right. I knew there were a man on the run. The lobbies thought you were riding in my caravan. He was in your caravan for one night. And then when you said you were going back, I had to get him out. What is this man to you? Lizzie's husband, that's all. My friend's husband. He's on the run from jail. He can't face going back. And she asked for my help. And did she ask you to kiss him and all? The police were all over the place. I was trying to get him away. And then a police car came right by. I said, grab hold of me, Jim. Pretend we're on holiday. Give us a kiss. Make it look like that's all you've got on your mind. I believe you. It's good to see you, son. You all right? Mm. I'm hungry. Where's your mother? Uh, she's at Bet's wedding. That's why I'm here. I knew you'd be hungry. I got you cold stuff because I didn't know how you'd be fixed for cooking. A pie. There's uh, bread, milk, there's uh, chicken there. <laughs> and, uh, we'd like the old whiskey. Well, son, you're back in the will. God bless you. Not that you were ever out of the will, of course. And having said that, not that I've got that much to leave you. Here, let's have a toast to bet in our wedding, eh? Slash you. Oh, I'll tell you what, she's a good girl. Saved my bacon last night. If it wasn't for her, I'd be back behind bars by now. Uh, listen, talking about going behind bars, we've got to get you out of here somewhere safe. And I'll tell you what, I've an idea how we can do it and all. Uh, <coughs> uh. Oh, Arthur, sorry we're a bit late. You're over an hour late, Cecil. Well, I know, but you know, things happen, you know how it is. I'd like you to meet my bride, Bet. This is Arthur, an old pal of mine. <laughs> I'm delighted to meet you. It's high time someone took Cecil in hand, and... Likewise. <laughs> oh, this is Liz 
And Fred, our witnesses. Hello. How do? Right, Arthur, ready when you are. Well, I, I'm sorry, it's not possible. Oh, co come on, then. I, I mean, I know we've messed you about a bit. Uh, I can't do it. Uh, um, uh, I just had a call. One of my parishioners on his deathbed by the sounds of it. Oh, but Arthur. 12 o'clock tomorrow, that's the best I can do. It's my only window. Well, that'll have to do, then. It's fine by me. Oh, it's all my fault. Give over. All right, then. 12 o'clock tomorrow. Fine. See you, then. Bye. I booked a table at the Wellington. Wedding lunch, champers, all the trimmings, even the wedding cake. Are we going to let it go to waste? Are we hellers like? Come on! About time, where have you been? Been stuck in here on me, all. I've been sorting me dad out with supplies. Sorry, it never occurred to me you might want to come and help. No, I don't. And I don't want you anywhere near him either. Steve, eventually the police will catch him if you're involved with Karen, him. I have to be involved. It's me dad. Now listen, he's, uh... He's on a boat in the marina down the coast. Come tomorrow, I'm going to take him out to sea. I'm going to take him over to Northern Ireland. What? Steve! Karen, he's got friends over there, pals that'll look after him. Take him to America if he wants. Have you gone mad? You're not going to get away with that. Karen, it's the only chance he's got. You're going to get caught? And then you'll end up in prison just like your dad. Who knows? If you ask nicely. Might let you share a cell with him, eh? Steve, I am begging you, don't do this. I've got to, Karen. Well, then I'm telling you, and I do mean this. If you go to prison, I'm not going to wait for you like stupid mum waits for Jim. Because when you come out, I'm not going to be around. So close to coming out. What did he have to go and do all this for? My mum has more milk than that. Look, I know me dad. He'd far sooner do more time and know you were there at the end of it. He thought he'd lost you. One moment of weakness. I never gave up on your dad. And that lorry would have never given up. It'd have worn you down eventually. I turned 46 this month. Got nothing from me, Dad. No car, no phone call. He never does. He said the thought of not being with me makes it even harder for him. Well, it would, wouldn't it? Laurie took me for a drive. Out past all the touristy bit to listen to how the sea sounds in the dark. There's nowhere in Blackpool without light shining on it. Who's glasses? We can't. I'll rinse them out. One of them's bust. Since when? Since I had to throw some at or I'd have been ripping you to bits the second you walked through that door. What? You must think I'm as stupid as you are. A nice, cosy glass of wine while Steve's out the way so you can explain to me why I'm best not moving back to Weatherfield. Maybe you're not. Maybe. Maybe I am. But I'll tell you something. My decision will not be based on my son's stupid, manipulative little cow of a fiancé telling me what's best for me. Me, manipulative? It's not me who's got Steve running around risking prison to save your flipping marriage. Steve's a grown man. He makes his own decisions. Some better than others. Oh, am I one of the bad ones, am I? Well, you won't want to come live in with us then, will you? Steve is trying to look out for me while I sort my life out. Whose fault is it? It needs sorting. Mine. And I am so lucky my son ain't judging me for that. Well, then maybe Steve should open his eyes. You tell him that. Go on, and see how he reacts. Tell him what an idiot his mother's been. Tell him how we should leave her to rot in the mess she's made of her life. And I'll tell you something. You try and come between me and my Steve, and you will lose every time. It's been nice, hasn't it? Well, I mean, apart from... Apart yeah. from me nearly killing us all. Don't beat yourself up about it. Well, if the car not the packed him, would have been seeing the illuminations. It's been all days ago. True. I wonder what people are going to make of this day now. Well, they'll make them out of it. They'll be more interested in the escaped convict. Be interested in it all. 
Hey, we've done nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, well, people read into things, don't they? Oh, we'll set them straight. Yeah, well, I think the less said about it, the better. Oh, no doubt my dad will say so much to set songs like you. <laughs> oh, I... Alone in a b and I say a b and <laughs> I'll have to have a way with him. Make sure he don't say anything to give out the wrong impression. Do you know, uh, Beth said your mum could go to Brighton with her? She doesn't know anybody there. Mm, she was there. I want to keep an eye on her. What, in case she cops off again? No, not for that, because she wouldn't. She's been through a very rough time. She's, uh, she's got to start all over again now. I always end up on our own, don't we, kid? One way or another. I think I'd rather be on my own than been married to prison. Jim's a good bloke, and you're loved. Don't you forget that. We used to come here loads when we were kids. Well, there's so much to do, isn't there? Go on rides, drift off in boats, and ground in police stations. Bet's train goes in less than an hour. Right. I'm going with her. To Brighton. You sure about this one? She's sure, Cocker. And you're coming with me to help me get my stuff out of the black dog. Come on. Come on. So, uh, didn't fancy Weatherfield after all, then? If you think my decision is out to do with you, you're wrong. I don't care what your decision's to do with, so long as it's made. Karen, there's no point you and me being enemies. We should try and get along, if only for Steve's sake. You should have thought about that before you started slagging me off. Actually, I bought it before. It was meant to be a joke. Kiss me quicker. By heck, the effect I have on fellas, it had to be quick before they drop dead. Let's have it back. It's our action. No, no. I shall wear it tonight. Might just get some offers. I'm sorry where things turned out. You deserved better. Deserved? Don't you start talking in the past tense to me, Fred Elliot. There's now past tense about Bet Lynch. Not now. Not ever. I'm not done with this world yet, whatever it tries to throw at me. Got to wear it. Bye-bye, Cruella. <laughs> Keep your eye on this one. Reminds me of me a bit. Try going blonde, love, trust me. You'll never look by. <laughs> Don't miss your train, eh, Bet? Come on, Liz. Party going in Brighton. Got our name on it. Fred, I'll give you a lift back to the caravan park. See how Ashley is. He's all right. Shaken but not stirred. You all right? Never better. 